Welcome to New Orleans, Louisiana, a Vite Arena Bowl 25, representing the American Conference, the Philadelphia Soul, representing the National Conference, the Arizona Rattlers. They fight for the James F. Foster Trophy. Arena Bowl 24, Jacksonville against Arizona. Aaron Garcia finds Jerron Harvey on the very last play of the game to break the hearts of the Arizona Rattlers. One of the great finishes in Arena Bowl history. Hello to everyone, my name is Ari Wolf and so glad that you're with us for a Vite Arena Bowl 25. Now for Arizona, it's a very proud franchise and it was a lot to overcome that loss last year. Their head coach Kevin Guy said this is the year for redemption for the Rattlers. Now Arizona's appeared in seven Arena Bowls, but they've only won two and their last win came all the way back in 1997. They think they're due. Now Philadelphia comes in, they are rolling. They are the highest scoring team in the league. They have won 10 straight and their defense causes turnovers they've created 64 turnovers this year i now bring in my friend and partner anthony heron and it's the arena bowl you know it's going to be about the quarterback play right anthony so we start with the soul dan rodabaugh leads a very balanced attack. perhaps the most underappreciated quarterback in the arena football league when you're talking about dan rodabaugh and there's good reason because there's talent just literally the lineup for the Philadelphia Soul. But Dan Rodabaugh, I think when you look at his game, it's not just about the way he delivers the football, the fourth most efficient quarterback in the Arena Football League, but it's demeanor in the pocket. He's so cool, calm, and collected. And I believe Dan Rodabaugh, with this victory tonight, could have an opportunity to submit himself as an AFL great for this modern day of quarterback in the Arena Football League. He deserves more credit than he's gotten so far. Well, the quarterback on the other side had to deal with that heartbreak a year ago. The lefty, Nick Davila, he's a great quarterback. Back-to-back -back years has put up huge numbers, and he gets another chance to be a champion tonight. I got to coach against Nick Davila when he was in the AF2 ranks years ago, and he won a championship with the Spokane Shock. I talked to him before last season's Arena Bowl, and Nick Davila really felt like getting a win in that game could have given him the opportunity to really prove himself as an AFL passer. But now three seasons into his career as an AFL quarterback, yet another season, over 100 touchdowns, second team all arena. To get this victory tonight, I don't think there's any doubt that you can say Nick Davila is one of the best we have in the game today. We are so looking forward to this, the silver anniversary season, Arena Bowl 25. So much excitement here in New Orleans. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back with tonight's opening kick. When we go through that door right now, I want you to look, act, and play like champions. That's right. Right. We do that, and we are going to be in here celebrating in 60 minutes. Guys, let's get your prayer. Let's get ready to go out and do some battle. Guys, listen up. Listen up. We've talked from day one about finishing. We've talked from day one about attacking. We've talked from day one about dominating your opponent. Be physical tonight. I promise you we will break them. They have been front runners all year long. They have not been tested. They've had no adversity. Bring it 60 minutes, and we'll take this championship home. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now, that was two head coaches that are ready for football. Those guys sound like they want to put the uniform on and the pads and play a little bit. Let's get to the rule of the game. For those of you new to arena football, eight players per side of the field. Players may play both offense and defense. It'll be a running clock until the final minute of each half. No punting, no stunting or twisting, and one receiver may be in motion towards the line of scrimmage before the play starts. Take a look at the two head coaches. Doug Plank in his first year as a head coach in Philadelphia. He has coached in four arena bowls, and there is Kevin Guy, the head coach for Arizona. I love his pregame speech. He was ready to go. He was ready to go this morning in our meeting. With the Hatfields and the McCoys said it best. Them's is fighting words. Let's get it on, Wolf. Arizona kicks off. Jeff Hewley, very dangerous return man for Philadelphia. And Hewley's going to get wrapped up at about the two and a half yard line. We take a look at the Philadelphia offense led by Dan Rodabaugh. In his third year, played his college ball at Miami of Ohio. 
brought him out to 115 touchdown passes this year. Derek Ross, such a key component to this balance that Philadelphia has offensively. And Donovan Morgan, one of the great receivers in the AFL. So the line of scrimmage will be the four yard line. So here we go. Avite Arena Bowl 25, Philadelphia and Arizona. Emory Sammons will be the motion man. Raba gets it to Sammons. Sammons gets to the 13 yard line. Gain of eight on the play. We'll take a look at the Arizona Rattler defense, which had the second best scoring defense in the AFL. And the reason they're great is because of the guys up front. Dukes, Pittman, and Hawthorne really bring a lot of pressure. Now, Virgil Gray, number four, not playing, and that's a huge part of the story tonight because he's the quarterback of that secondary, Anthony. All the checks that they make for the Arizona secondary made by Virgil Gray. So the communication on the back end, especially with the different looks they'll get from Philadelphia, will be more difficult. Rodabaugh, quick hitter again, it's Sammons. And Sammons out of bounds, and Philadelphia picks up the first down. To describe this Philadelphia offense as, as explosive is not even fair. 68 points per game. They scored 1,228 points in 18 regular season games, an AFL record. The Soul have won 10 in a row, and during that 10-game winning streak, the average margin of victory, 24 points. It's the variety. It's the multiplicity of the attack. Philadelphia can bring so many different wide receivers to you to threaten you as a defense. Ross, the ball carrier. And Ross into Arizona territory to the 23-yard line. Derek Ross is really special. The numbers that he's put up over the last year's back-to-back -back seasons, rushing for more than 30 touchdowns. And back-to-back -back seasons, over 600 rushing yards for Derek Ross. First player in the history of the Arena Football League to accomplish that feat. If he keeps this pace going, he's only two years in, or if he keeps this pace going, by the end of year three, he could potentially be the all-time leading rusher in AFL history. No one has ever seen a running back like this put these types of numbers up in back-to-back -back years. Second and three, Bracken's in motion. The throw is to Bracken. Can't bring it in. Now, Larry Bracken is the only remaining player from Philadelphia's 2008 championship team. And Larry Bracken's coming on late in the year in the conference championship game last week. Larry Brackett's had eight touchdowns, five of them receiving. He did that right here on the NFL Network. And Larry Brackett's, he's a guy who, at a certain point in his career, he was a number one target, came here to Philadelphia for the 2011 season, for the 2012 season, no longer a number one target. Early in the season, maybe a number three, possibly even number four target when you look at the weapons out there. But he's emerged since Tiger Jones went to the Philadelphia Eagles. Third and three. Ball batted up in the air. Fight for it. Arizona has got it. Kevin McCullough with the interception. McCullough, it was, the ball was volleyball around, and Kevin McCullough in the right place at the right time. So a big break for Arizona as they stop the high-powered offense from Philadelphia. One of the best Jack linebackers in the Arena Football League. And it's because he's got a blitz. He can bring the physicality at the point of attack. So you don't have to bring him out of the lineup. There he is right there. He's going to work towards the football once he sees his teammates batted in the air. And as that football bounces around, Kevin McCullough, he made the game-saving interception last week on fourth down against Utah that put them in a VT Arena Bowl 25. Arizona, good field position inside Philadelphia territory. A flag is down. The catch is made by Marquis White. Now this Arizona offense also very explosive, averaging 62 points per game, which was fourth best in the AFL this season. Nine yards on the play, but Kevin Guy's trying to figure out whether or not he wants to accept the penalty. First down. A penalty on Mac linebacker Brandon Perkins. The offense for Arizona, terrific, but the most impressive part is the size of their receivers. 6'3, 6'3, six, three, six, three, and 6'2. And the Philadelphia secondary, while very talented, and their ball hawks, much smaller guys. It should be an interesting matchup. First and five. On the ground, it's Odie Armstrong, and no place to go. Very nice job from the Philadelphia defense. And we'll take a look at that Philadelphia sole defense. A defense that gave up 51 points per game. 
critical for them to get pressure up front. Brian Robinson is the best guy up front. He had 10 sacks on season, a franchise record. And Rayshon Kaiser is a dynamic player in the secondary, along with Kent Richardson. I mean, as a team, 34 interceptions. I mean, that's what really stands out for the defense. You can talk about those little guys all you want. Each head coach told us the game's going to be one up front. Second and five. Too much on that throw. There was contact between Kaiser and White, but no call to bring up third down. And I would call that contact incidental, looking at it in live action. Marquis White, every bit of six foot seven. Pocket kept clean here up front. And it looked like either his feet got tangled or he's just trying to draw a flag, but I didn't see anything that Rayshon Kaiser did. They should have drawn a penalty, so nice job by the back judge, not going for the okie doke. Arizona very good on third down in the regular season, better than 53% conversion rate. They go to the tight end and it works. Vincent Rogers, the big guy, pretty nice catch, showed off some athleticism. And I like the play call, Anthony, because it slows down the pass rush. And they need to slow down the pass rush. You're going to watch the big tight end there, Sir Vincent Rogers. He's going to work just through the middle of the defense. The Jack linebacker leaves, that opens him up, and he's made several big plays for the offense this season, Ari. First and goal, get it to Reed and no place to go. That play was diagnosed very quickly by Justin Warren, third-year player from Texas A&M. They really like Warren, he's got a high motor, he's a great athlete, he showed his quickness there. There's no gain on the play, so second and goal for the Rattlers. Had a big strip in the ball game last week in their huge victory over the defending champion Jacksonville Sharks. He's a technician at the point of attack. He uses his hands well. He's violent with his hands as a pass rusher. You see him when other players are securing tackles. He comes in trying to get the strip. White in motion. Flags. They're going to call this play dead. Five-yard penalty, first down. Dustin Barno, the outstanding nose for Philadelphia, a little anxious that time. But talk about the anxiety of being a player in this championship game and how long it'll take it for these guys to calm down a little bit. Think about a 20-week regular season and your two franchises who were favored coming into the year to potentially be in this position. We know Philadelphia with the talent that Doug Plank brought here, the coaching staff he put together in Arizona after making the Arena Bowl last year. The pressure's been on these two teams throughout the entire season to get to this point and now it's finally here. Second and goal. Davila throws incomplete. Purify was the closest guy to the ball. Now, Arizona very good in the season in the red zone third best in the AFL converting almost 86 percent of the time so like third the and goal from the three what do you like here I like to read last time from Davila he tried to go back shoulder to Mo Purified didn't quite fit it in quite tight enough but this is a territory where they do have a weapon in their own right and Odie Armstrong who they can potentially give the football to Kevin Guy told us he believes more so than Derek Ross that Odie Armstrong is a complete fullback maybe the best in the league Davila will throw, caught, purified, touchdown, Rattlers. It was the AFL Rookie of the Year last season. First team all arena this year, and it's because Mo Purified was going to just work through here and appear on the slant route into your screen. He just beat Rayshon Kaiser right inside. He used his hands to do it, which is extremely important as a wide out when you're down red area. How about that throw? I mean, there was not much of a window there. And Purify with that good size reaches up and snares it. Chris Gould on for the extra point. So Arizona takes advantage of the turnover. Kevin McCullough gets the interception. Davila to Purify. Arizona leads 7 to nothing. A VTIC Arena Bowl 25. This arena football game is brought to you by Net10. No contract wireless on America's best networks.
One of the matchups we're going to have to watch is this man right here, Rayshon Kaiser, one of the best in the business, but he's facing maybe the most complete wide receiver in the Arena Football League in Maurice Purify. Just makes a nice quick inside move, uses the hands as I referenced before, and it was a quick read. Davila got the football out of his hands right on time. And as he did it, there was no way for Rayshon Kaiser to really react because as he came out of his speed turn, the football was already in the hands of the wide receiver. And in the red zone, size is such a huge factor. It's almost like basketball because Purify is posting up Kaiser. And if he gets his body turned, there's not much that Kaiser can do. Arizona to kick it off. Jeff Hewley waits for a chance at the return. Big block, no flag. Hewley stopped at the five yard line. So we have a break in the action, 7-10 to go in the opening quarter. Avite Arena Bowl 25. Look at all those rings. Arizona wants another ring. Philly looking for their second ring. For the latest in arena football fan news, polls, message boards, and AFL social media, be sure to check out Arena Football Nation, powered by the National Guard at arenafootball.com. Now for Philadelphia, when we talked to Doug Plank, the head coach, he said the most important thing that he did was hire that guy, Clint Dawzell, to be his offensive coordinator. Clint Dawzell had been the head coach in Dallas and brought a lot of the key players that have made Philadelphia into the American Conference champs in 2012. That was part of what made the transition a bit difficult for Philadelphia early in the season because they had so many guys who were in Dallas last season, brought some talent in, tried to meld the group together, and Doug Plank told us today they really didn't start to become a team and really truly begin to gel until they got into that season opener and really had the bullets starting to fly. Donovan Morgan in motion. Rodabon looking at Morgan. Can't make the catch. Good defense in the secondary. R. Keith Brown. And R. Keith Brown will have even more responsibility without Virgil Gray playing tonight. As a rookie as well, the responsibility on R. Keith Brown is huge. And this is a matchup similar to the one on the other side of the ball. We're going to have one of the best DBs versus one of the best wide receivers, R. Keith Brown. He's going to be matched up with Donovan Morgan quite a bit throughout the night. If Dan Rodabaugh puts the ball on the money, Morgan has to come up with that grab. Second and 10 for Philadelphia. Rodabaugh, Salmons can't make the catch. Ball was on target. Every Salmons hobbling away from that play. Larry Bracken's coming into the lineup. Bound to happen. Ball sails on Rada by a bit. Emory Sammons going into the stands. And important to keep in mind, the active roster is only 21 players, so there's not a lot of options to go to. For Philadelphia, you lose one receiver, you can't really afford to lose a second one. Hopefully for Philadelphia, Sammons is going to be okay. Rada ball. Hewley's got it. Hewley tackled at the Philadelphia 21-yard line. Jeff Hewley announced last night at the awards dinner as the AFL Ironman of the Year. He's three-time member of the All-Ironman team. As you see Rodbaugh getting the play call from Clint Dawzell. These two guys have a very close relationship. Doug Blank telling us that he likes to just listen in on the conversations between Clint and Dan and how they like to look at film and break down the game. Well, Doug Plank's always been a defensive guy. And so back when he worked with Danny White, when he was on the staff of the Arizona Rattlers, and now having a guy like Clint Dozell as his offensive coordinator, he still always tries to pick up tidbits. Rodabaugh gets it to Hewley. And Hewley brought down, brought down excuse me, by McCullough at the 13-yard line. And this was, it begun up front with the pass rush because the entire defensive got collapsed inside and that allowed Dan Rodabaugh who's not known as a really nimble guy but he moves the pocket to the field side that opens up the window where he can deliver the ball on target to Jeff Hewley and it's a nice job by Hewley just sitting there in the zone he had the knowledge that Dan Rodabaugh was leaving the pocket and so he didn't continue on the route he adjusted as the quarterback adjusted first and ten Bracken's in motion Rodabaugh and that's broken up Brown 
good read on the play. Steps in front, knocks him down with his right hand. Second team all arena as a rookie. There's aggression in the way that our Keith Brown covers people. There's aggression in the way he comes up and tackles, and that's a difficult thing because as a rookie in the Arena Football League, you have to accept the fact, Ari, that you're going to get beat for touchdowns at times, but still have the willingness to take these types of chances. You can't be great. He who hesitates is lost, and that's precisely why our Keith Brown made that play. He went for the ball aggressively. And our Keith Brown was offered a chance this week to go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he said not until the AFL season is over. Rodabaugh looking for Morgan, and a flag comes in. Brown had his hands on Donovan Morgan. This will go against Arizona. Pass interference, number 11 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Marquise Brown doesn't agree with the call. He's continued to be matched up one-on-one -on -one with Donovan Morgan. So as he watches Morgan come there, no speed turn necessary because he doesn't pedal in the paint. He impedes the route while the ball is in flight just beyond five yards. And I believe that's where the flag came from because he wasn't holding. And really, you could almost even say maybe it was an uncatchable football, but he was impeding the route beyond five yards. First and goal. Runs. Lots of room. He's in for six. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Derek Ross, he's going to get the credit, and he most certainly deserves the credit. But this touchdown run started up front. Devin Clark just collapsed the boundary side of the line of scrimmage on Arizona's defense. And with that type of blocking up front, Derek Ross is just far too explosive of a ball carrier to allow him the edge. Scotia comes on and hooks the extra point and misses it. So Arizona leads Philadelphia 7-6. The big boys up front get it done. I think even Anthony Heron could have taken this ball for the touchdown. But it's Derrick Ross, Philadelphia, on the board. <laughs> New Orleans Arena. For all the latest news, scores, and inside information, log on to arenafootball.com. Whether you want to chat with fellow arena football fans or just check on the very latest league standings or stats, arenafootball.com is where it's at. Arizona leading Philadelphia 7-6. to six. You can't come to New Orleans without getting some beads, necklaces, some of those things. The Arena Football League has been in New Orleans throughout the week, having a great time. Well, I noticed at the awards dinner last night that you didn't have any beads on. I was looking for that for, out of you, you know? <laughs> if we're going to co-host something, I expect you to be the guy with the beads on. So had Philadelphia the awards to kick banquet it off. last yeah. night. It was a good time. Very well done. Kerry Reed is deep for Arizona because Virgil Gray unable to play due to a leg injury. And Reed gets hit at the eight, breaks the tackle, and finally forced out of bounds at the Arizona 14-yard line. Now, Anthony, the coaches told us, you've mentioned already in the broadcast, that this game would be decided up front. And so far, both offensive lines have done a very nice job. They really have. I did feel like Arizona's defensive front started to get a feel for the offensive line of Philadelphia a bit on that last series. So now this second series out for the defensive front from Philadelphia. We'll see. Do they start to get a feel as well? Davila all kinds of time and gets it to Reed. Reed forced out of bounds at the Philadelphia 14-yard line. There's just the subtle nuances of quarterback play. When you've got an offensive line who can protect you like this, where they can just have a very pretty arc to the pocket. Go ahead and freeze it for me here. This arc to the pocket that you see, Nick Davila just shrugs that left shoulder a little bit, and that's all he needs to do to evade the pass rush. He can be calm and comfortable in the pocket because there's no one coming free. There's no one coming clean at his legs. He doesn't have to be nervous about that, and so the ball mechanics can be pretty. 22 yards on the play for the Rattlers. Reed. And we're going to rule it incomplete. And let's go to the third member of our broadcast team, one of the great quarterbacks in AFL history, Cedric Bonner. 
Thanks, Ari, here with Dan Rodeball. Dan, how important was it for you guys to respond after that early turnover? Yeah, you know, uh, they did a good job getting in the throwing lane there. DN got his hands up. We got to do a better job cutting, getting him down. But, you know, I thought we came in. We had a little bit of them there going, and then we turned it over, and it needed to come out. We got stopped down early on the, on the kick return, and we just got to get some rhythm going. I think we did a good job. Derek did a good job punching it in, and you know, just keep them coming. Thanks, Dave. Guys? Thanks, Zed. Davila, great window, and touchdown, Arizona. It's Kerry Reed, 14 yards. The route combination is just silly there. <laughs> and the coverage didn't know what to do. We're going to give you a look at it after the kick. It's very difficult to confuse the Doug Plank secondary. They've been through a couple of different versions of this Philadelphia secondary throughout the season, but they found the cohesion that they've really needed throughout this second half of the season after a couple of very big roster moves, as you know, Ari. The biggest one of Mishai Robinson having an in-season trade. Mishai Robinson, one of the great defensive players, and they trade him back to Jacksonville. Extra point from goal to get good. So Arizona leads 14 to 6, and the first quarter is complete in New Orleans. Avite Arena Bowl 25. We figured it would be a great matchup. The Philadelphia Soul looking for their second title. Arizona looking for their third title. Davila looking real strong in the first quarter. Net 10 Arena Football Friday is brought to you by Rev Honey, the healthy alternative to energy drinks. Learn about honey and health at RevHoney.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Avite Arena Bowl 25 in New Orleans. One quarter in the books. And Anthony, when we reflect on the opening 15 minutes of play in Arena Bowl 25, one turnover by Philadelphia, ball got knocked around, Arizona takes advantage, and that's why they have a one-score lead. A Philadelphia team that led the Arena Football League with a plus 23 turnover margin, they're the ones who kind of have first blood drawn on them in the turnover battle, and I think if the game moves forward with more turnovers from the two teams, you would think maybe because of what we've seen from Philadelphia during the regular season, they'll end up being the ones with the edge because of the, the talent they have in the secondary. Let's talk about the Arizona quarterback, Nick Davila. He looked very comfortable in the first quarter because he got great protection, Anthony, from the big guys up front. I like what the protection has done so far from Davila, but Philadelphia had the third best pass rush when you just factor sacks in the Arena Football League, and it was a pass rush that got better throughout the regular season. Hewley on the return. Jeff Hewley needs another block. And Hewley brought down at the 20-yard line. Let's check in at field level with Seth Bonner. Thanks, Ari, here with Nick Davila. Nick, off to a hot start. What do you got to do to keep the gas going? You know, I just can't keep playing uh, football, keep uh, pitching and catching. You guys took away, a got a turnover from this team earlier. They're plus 23 coming in on the season. How important was it for you guys to get that early possession steal? Well, as you know, this is a possession game, and uh, when you have more possessions, you more have more opportunity to win. So we just got to keep chipping away and keep playing football. A lot, lot, lot of game left. Thank you. Guys? Thanks, guys. Ross, the ball carrier, gain of a little more than a yard. Davila, a little bit slow out of the gate. He was two for five, and then... The four attempts after that, three for four for 39 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But for Philadelphia, this is a team I, th I still feel like they're waiting for someone to make a play to kind of get their team jacked up and really get into Arena Bowl 25. You almost wonder if they wasted a couple of points. I mean, 89 points that they put on the board last week against Jacksonville. You would hope showing up for the Arena Bowl that they've still got some of that left in the tank. Rodabaugh right going deep. Was double covered. Arizona defender went hard into those padded boards in the back side of the end zone. That's Marquise Floyd. Now, if you weren't with us earlier, Virgil Gray not playing one of the great members of the Arizona secondary. They cannot afford to have Marquise Floyd go down. And you know it well, Ari, the saying goes in the Arena Football League that the wall is undefeated. Always has been always will be you see the pads there that come down as marquise floyd hits the deck we're gonna take a break the training staff will get
get a look at Floyd, and hopefully we'll have a report when we come back to New Orleans. I'm joined here within the New Orleans arena by Lieutenant Colonel Greg Parker of the Louisiana National Guard, and you're being honored tonight as a hometown hero. What does a phrase like that mean to you when you think about being a hometown hero and especially being representing the National Guard? Well, being a member of the National Guard is, is extremely special to me, uh, but being a hometown hero is really kind of an overstatement. Uh, the, you know, we really view the heroes as our families and the guys overseas that are serving right now and, and, and those that have given their lives, they've, they've, you know, they've done the ultimate sacrifice. So calling us a hero is really not what it's all about. What it's about is really appreciating our families and the guys that are serving right now overseas. And not only hero, but citizen soldier is a term that's often used with the National Guard. And National Guard and the Arena Football League have been partnered now for a couple of years. So it seems like there's a bit of a marriage between football values and National Guard values. How would you compare the two? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, in the military, we have a set of core values, loyalty, service, and, and hard work. And, you know, when you compare that to a football team, players on a football team have to act together. They have to, they have, to have synergy when they're doing something. And in the military, if you don't have that, then you fail. And so the only way to succeed really is depend on your partner, depend on the guy in the foxhole next to you. you know, make sure that you get the mission done. And uh, hopefully some guys out on the field tonight will get that done. I know after 26 years in the Louisiana National Guard, if I had anyone in the foxhole with me, I'd certainly feel good with Lieutenant Colonel Greg Parker. Very nice. And there are other members of the National Guard here in attendance at New Orleans Arena. They've been a big part of festivities throughout the week is honoring the National Guard. And there's the Dream Team, representatives from every AFL team on the dance team. Good news, Marquise Floyd was able to walk off on his own, so hopefully he'll return for Arizona. Third down for Philadelphia. And Hewley makes the catch but does not get enough for the first down. And Doug Plank be very quick to tell anybody he hates field goals. So expect Philadelphia to go for it. On the season fourth down, they were 13 of 25. And from this place of the field, it seems like an obvious choice to go for it. And the soul will go for it on fourth down. Arizona's defense has been good on fourth down. They were number six in the Arena Football League during the regular season, giving up just over 47% of fourth down conversions. Fourth down play. Rodabaugh going deep, looking for Morgan. It's underthrown. R. Keith Brown, the interception. Brown cuts it back, looking for a block. Brown still on his feet across the Arizona 20. Philadelphia has turned it over twice, and the Arizona defense makes a big play on fourth down. But that one's really on the quarterback. That ball was underthrown. There appears to be something about the matchup with R. Keith Brown that Philadelphia likes, and I don't know what it is because this guy is a playmaker. Protection solid again up front. Dan Rodabout decides to throw it off his back foot for some reason as Donovan Morgan hits the ground. R. Keith Brown hits the sky. Going up top for the football, coming up with the interception. He took two of these back to the house during the regular season, getting the ball once again to that's, his offense. That's his third postseason interception this season. Davila looking for Purify. Purify's got it. Mo Purify. Give the Rattlers a touchdown, and the lead is now 20 to 6. Donovan Morgan talked to me just the other day because he had heard me talk about Maurice Purify as maybe being the best receiver in the Arena Football League. There's plays being made early here in this football game by Mo Purify. He's the deuce in this game that's coming up with the big shots. We're going to learn a lot about Dan Rodabaugh because he's got to settle this team down, make better throws, because Philadelphia has not struggled much this year, especially they haven't lost since May 18th. So this is going to be a difficult task for Philadelphia. they got to wrap their minds around what's going on right here. But how about the Rattlers getting it done on both sides of the ball? Brown gets the interception, gets a pretty good field position. Davila to purify Arizona looking strong. The James F. Foster Trophy, it is a monster trophy. Certainly all about teamwork. 
Avite Arena Bowl 25. And right now the Philadelphia Soul have got to be in some shock because Davila and Arizona lead 21 to six. And Philadelphia coming in having won 10 straight. Two turnovers, two interceptions thrown by Dan Rodabaugh and for Philadelphia. It's gonna be very interesting to see how they react to this kind of adversity. The Arizona Rattlers look like a football team right now that wants to right a wrong. They really feel like this is a ball game that makes up for what happened to them last season. And you're looking at Dan Rodabaugh right there. He's gonna have to lead this football team back down multiple scores in the first half of a football game. They've had a couple of comebacks this season. But we did hear Kevin Guy in the pregame talk about feeling like his football team could break the Philadelphia soul. It reinforces what he was telling him in the locker room. Hewley on the return. Hewley able to spin away from one guy and then down at the six. So Dan Rodabaugh, who on the season had tremendous numbers, 115 touchdown passes, only 18 interceptions. He's already thrown two interceptions. Now, one of the great things about the AFL is the access on the field. So Cedric Bonner will be down on the field. He's going to get the play call from Clint Dawzell. So that way we'll have an idea of what Philly's trying to accomplish. Sid? That's up, so take a little pressure off right about here. There you go, guys. Ross. And he gets across the 10 yard line. Not only did Clint Dolzell give us the play, but also said the reasoning behind it, taking some play off, taking some pressure off Dan Rodabaugh. Cedric Bonner still down on the field next to him. What's your dial up? Uh, we're going to try to hit Emory on a little short uh, toss over the jack box. If they play zone, we'll probably hit uh, Demo on a quick slant as well. Guys? Salmon's in motion. Rodabal looking for Sammons. And it's incomplete. Marquise Floyd, who was injured a few minutes ago. The defensive back making the play for Arizona. Clint Dozell has very high expectations for this offense. Again, the Philadelphia Soul broke the league record for points. Said, what does Clint want now? We got Demo on a quick, uh, basically, motion uh, slant route over the box. Guys? I like Donovan Morgan when he's in high motion because not only is he smooth in his route running, but he's a physical guy in the secondary. Third down play, and it's another interception. It's R. Keith Brown. And R. Keith Brown still on his feet. And he will go down at the Philadelphia 21. Two interceptions for R. Keith Brown. The Arizona defense has come up with three first half turnovers. Are we sure he's a rookie? Are we sure this is his very first arena ball? Because R. Keith Brown looks about as comfortable as anyone on the football field. And when I talk about aggression, it's not just about being physical as a defensive back, he's undercutting routes. He's taking the chances necessary to not just come up with a tackle, but to come up with interception. He's being a playmaker on the back end. First and 10 for Arizona. Davila completes the pass to purify it. And I want to stick with Brown because opportunities as a football player sometimes don't come around that often. And Arky Brown had a conversation this week with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They wanted to bring him in. And Arky Brown said he had unfinished business and that he wanted to win the title with the Arizona Rattlers. And if I'm the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and I'm watching right now, I can't wait to get this guy into camp with the way he's playing tonight. Not just the commitment that he shows to his football team, but just as a player on the field. You're watching him out here as a playmaker. Davila to White right through his hands. And not only R. Keith Brown, Sir Vincent, Sir Vincent Rogers, the tight end for the Rattlers, also had an NFL opportunity come up from the Philadelphia Eagles. Two members of the Rattlers decided that they had walked this journey with the team so far throughout the regular season, and it was important to them to finish the walk. And for this Arizona franchise, one of the premier franchises since they came in the league, this is their seventh appearance in an arena bowl, but they only have two titles. And I think this group and this coaching staff wants to restore the Rattlers to one of the premier franchises in the AFL. Third and short. And a miscommunication there. 
As you talk about the, the lineage of the Arizona Rattlers, we've been tossing down to Seth Bonner, not only the, voted the greatest quarterback in NFL history by the Silver Anniversary Committee, but of course, the vast majority of his career with the Rattlers, multiple Arena Bowl championships, a couple of Arena Bowl losses that are there as well. But we're going to get some news at halftime, as we know we've announced it throughout the season that Seth Bonner was one of the finalists for the AFL Hall of Fame. And we're going to have some big news coming up at halftime to find whether Clint Dozell, whether Seth Bonner, a couple of the finalists, actually made the 2012 class. A 30-yard field goal attempt. Gold, the kick, has the distance, and it is good. Gold only missed a single field goal on the season, and those goalposts only nine feet across. That's half the size of NFL goalposts. What a start for the Arizona Rattlers, leading Philadelphia 24-6. Here is a recap of what's happened so far in Avite Arena Bowl 25, and most of these highlights are Arizona Rattler highlights. Fourth most efficient passer in the Arena Football League was Dan Rodabaugh during the regular season. Three turnovers, three interceptions in the first half of this football game. And Nick Davila, the polar opposite. He has been on point throughout the first half, delivering the football to a lineage of wide receivers and our Keith Brown. I would say he'd have to be the net 10 player of the game. If you look at the early portion of it. And this field goal is key because he, I mean, it's not easy to make field goals and that puts Arizona up 24 to six. Davila has got to feel very good, but Dan Rodabaugh, he's got a lot of football ahead of him. This arena football, you could be down three scores with a minute to go and still have a chance. And in the conference championship game, Arizona was down with a minute to go and they end up winning their game. So Soul fans certainly should not give up hope. Flag is down, it's gonna be kick catch interference. The kick coverage guys can't get inside the five before the receiver is able to corral the football. It's a very hard thing to stop running when you're, when you're in the kick coverage unit. And Brandon Anderson was at full speed. He didn't want Jeff Hewley to get out of the end zone. Kick catch interference, violation of the five yard belt, number 21 of the kicking team. It'll be a five yard penalty from the five yard line, first down. You know, there, there are certain coaches who just coach the coverage, coverage guys, go ahead and keep running. We'll take a penalty every once in a while if it means those opportunities where we don't get one. Because you don't want to stop your momentum at the five. I mean, you, you know, nine out of 10 times, the kick return guy is gonna have the football. So we'll see how Philadelphia responds. Down by 18 points. Rodabaugh going deep, looking for Morgan. Brown's there. Incomplete. Almost another one for our Keith Brown. I'm curious, though, when Clint Dozell is going to realize that maybe this Morgan-Brown matchup is not in Philadelphia's favor. As when it comes down to a Donovan Morgan, when I describe him as the most complete wide receiver in the lineup, he's the guy with the most talent. He's the guy who can make the play on the deep ball. He's got jump ball ability. You can throw it to him short with run after the catch. He's an explosive playmaker. He's the guy who you really want to be able to feature in this passing game. This is a matchup that has not favored him so far. Rodabaugh, complete. Sammons makes the catch. And let's go to Sed Bonner. Coach Blank, how do you get your guys back to right the ship? How do you get it going moving forward? Well, you know, we're just not executing right now, especially on offense. We're turning the ball over. Other than point scored, turnover is the most important element of this game. We've just been, we're not being able to continue our drives and we're turning the balls over. What do you guys need to do to settle your young quarterback down? I just think he needs to get the ball out faster. It's, everything's been late so far. We started in warm-ups. So we just got to get the ball out quicker, and especially versus his pass rush. Guys? Thank you, Seth. First and 10 for the soul. Hughley's wide open and he'll take it for six. Touchdown, Philadelphia. As many plays as our Keith Brown has made so far in the first half, he just got a little bit greedy on that one. And I like the fact that Dan Rodenbach thrusted his eyes made the proper read and delivered the football to the open receiver. Didn't feel the need to try to force the ball deep downfield. 
Philadelphia really needed a score, something to get their confidence back. It's a team that has not lost since May 18th, a 10-game winning streak coming into Arena Bowl 25. High snap. DeMichael does a very nice job, the backup quarterback, to get it down, and Scotia converts the extra point. The Arizona lead is now 24-13, and Dan Rodabaugh gets his first touchdown pass of the night. Our Keith Brown has been the thief in the night so far in this football game. But he got a little bit greedy, thought that they were going to try to deliver the football short to Donovan Morgan. He's the one who voided the zone that Jeff Hewley ends up working into. And Dan Rodabaugh, that's the quarterback we've seen throughout the regular season, the guy who can survey the coverage and get the football out of his hands on time. And the Philadelphia defense this year has been as opportunistic as any defense in the AFL, creating 64 turnovers. At some point, the Philadelphia defense is going to have to find a way to stop the Arizona offense. Without a doubt. And as I've seen the Arizona pass rush start to get a bead on the pass protection for Philadelphia, you would have to think the Philadelphia soul, their defensive line has to view this as a challenge where it's their opportunity now to start trying to make their imprint on this game. For the latest news, scores, and inside information, log on to arenafootball.com. Whether you want to chat with fellow arena football fans or just check on the very latest league standings or stats, arenafootball.com is where you get the information. We certainly rely on it every week of the season. 23 week season, 20 weeks of the regular season, three weeks of the playoffs. It all started all the way back on March 9th. And now Arena Bowl 25, a great accomplishment for the league. 25 years. Scotcha kicks it deep. It'll be Reed on the return, bounces off the iron. Very nice play, guess who? Our Keith Brown. Very smart play there by Brown to secure the football. The sure-handed R. Keith Brown. I've seen him catching the ball as a defender, but that's a huge play that you reference there, Ari, because that would have been the opportunity to have that turnover back. When you get a bar ball as a coverage team, you really start to salivate because you have an opportunity to get it back for your offense. Nick Davila so far tonight, 7 for 12, 86 yards, and three touchdown passes. Just about four and a half minutes to go till halftime. Arena Bowl 25, Arizona first to 10. Davila throws, Reed makes the catch, gain of 11, and an Arizona first down. Davila, second team all arena this year, played a great game against Utah in the conference championship game, 331 yards through the air, eight touchdowns, and zero interceptions. In a matchup with the Utah Blaze with the record setting, Tommy Grady at quarterback. The Bucs were one of the hottest teams, maybe the hottest team in the league headed, headed into that game. Quick hitter to Reed. Nice job by the Arizona receivers, and they're a big physical bunch. And so that quick screen turns into another first down for Arizona. And it's twofold because you get the ball to the wide receiver out in space, purify the opportunity to throw it over the top. And those guys are big. Purify is 225. Gathers is 215 and Reed is 205. Davila in trouble. He goes down. It's a sack. Great job by Davila to hold on to the football. Philly's saying they got it, but I think they ruled the play dead before the ball came out. They did. Brian Robinson got an early jump off the snap. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Robinson is pleading his case, number 12 for Philadelphia. Illegal formation, number 12, defensive lineman out of his stance at the snap. It's a five-yard penalty. First down, replay first down. And you hear him say illegal formation instead of offside because your hand as a pass rusher has to be on the ground at the snap. And so although his head may not have crossed the neutral zone, it's the fact that Brian Robinson's hand was off the ground. You have to be in a three-point stance as a down lineman at the snap of the football. That was very close, though. Fisher was right there. And obviously easier to see in slow motion. Davila hit on the throw, and it's incomplete. And there is a flag down at the 17-yard line. But the pressure got to the Arizona quarterback. This is the first time we're seeing Philadelphia start to get some pressure. 
It was Brian Robinson again who got home. One of the top sack artists in the Arena Football League. High motion, man, offsides. Offense, 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. On the previous snap, Robinson had beat the, the edge blocker up the field with a speed rush. So on this last play, sets him up upfield and clubbed him outside. That set up the inside pass rush move. This is the situation he likes it in, where he's to the short side of the field. So it doesn't end up being a big hit on Nick Davila, but you see he hits him on the arm. Now Davila starting to flex that hand a little bit. The constant pressure, it starts to get into the head. You can pressure him physically or mentally as a pass rusher. First and 15 on the wide receiver screen and a very nice tackle by Stevenson fourth year player Stevenson came in during the season and he was actually brought in because Donovan Morgan suggested to the coaching staff that Stevenson would be a nice addition so Donovan Morgan a receiver thought hey this team needs some help in the secondary and Stevenson's come in and done a nice job Philadelphia calls timeout with 2.17 to go till halftime. And they're going to need as many possessions as they can finishing up this first half. It's because of the turnover battle, and you heard Nick Davila talking to Cedric Bonner down there about it on the sidelines. The turnovers and the possessions, so key in the Arena Football League. And so what they can do to try to get possessions back using this timeout to see if they can have a two-for-one, potentially even a three-possession situation here with just over two. Left. I just think there's a lot of time in the half to already be thinking about using timeouts to gain the extra possession. And then the other thing is that is key is that Arizona will get the football at the start of the third quarter. So second and 11 for the Rattlers. Davila throws, Reed makes the catch, but a flag comes down. Flag at the 16 yard line. It's going to be on Jack Linebacker, Joe Goosby. The depth of the box is only five yards. Illegal defense. Jack Linebacker, number 18, out of the box. That's a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Let's check it with Seth. Marquis, two interceptions on the night. Should have had a third. Is there something you've seen in film that giving you a tip or a clue with the routes are kind of run? Uh, no, uh, me and the D, uh, uh, DBs and the D-linemen talking pressure picks, couple sacks all night long. I know the uh, D-line going to begin pressing. We just got to um, go attack the ball. So I'm just attacking the ball every time the ball in the air. As a rookie, you're showing great patience in your back pedal, something that's hard to learn in this game. What, I mean, does that come from Coach Guy, Omar? Who's giving you that kind of knowledge? Well, I've been working hard, working hard for a long time. Uh, different coaches have been giving me different techniques. I'm just bringing it all together, and just I'm, I'm just able to make plays for my team. Thank you, guys. Thank you, said it. You know, their, uh, their, excuse me, their defensive coordinator, Omar Smith, was one of the great defensive backs in AFL history, so he certainly has a great instructor. Davila throws, and that's behind Purify. And we're seeing play after play now that the Arizona offensive line is not getting the kind of protection for Davila that we saw in the first quarter. There's a bit of a chess match that takes place. As a pass rusher, you start to set up situations in a game, and they just brought some force right there in the middle. There may be a little bit of a flop, but Brian Robinson, you got a little bit of a late shove in there on the QB. Well, you were a defensive end. Don't you think it's kind of worth it at this point to at least try to get in Davila's head a little bit? Bobby Love throws, catches made by Marquis White. So it's that's very close to a first down. I just always thought you defensive ends, whenever you can get a chance, you want to mess with the quarterback a little bit. Whether you mess with him physically, mentally, you most certainly want the guy where you're looking at right there for Philadelphia. You want Nick Davila to be as uncomfortable as possible. Well, Davila and the Rattlers have been comfortable. We have come to the one-minute warning. A beat a Arena Bowl 25, the Arizona Rattlers. Lead the Philadelphia Soul 24-13. Third down when we come back. Coming up at the half, Kurt Warner is in the studios back in Culver City. Kurt will give us his take on Arena Bowl 25 and lots of NFL preseason highlights, including 
the debut of Tim Tebow in a Jets uniform. Class of 2012 finalists for the AFL Hall of Fame. Our sideline reporter, Cedric Bonner, at the top of that list. And the new class for 2012 will be announced at halftime. And here are some of the other nominees. The Cleveland time is as much love as McIntyre gets as the greatest DB ever. That may be number two. You look at Cleve Van Thomas and the career that he put together. I'll tell you this, though, when Kevin Guy told me that R. Keith Brown reminded him of Kenny McIntyre, I thought to myself, this guy's a player because Kenny McIntyre would certainly be in the conversation. If he's not the best DB of all time, then he's the second best DB of all time. 97 career interceptions for Kenny McIntyre. Came out of retirement, got another pick this year. Third down, and Odie Armstrong picks up the Arizona first down. So now it's really about managing the clock. If you're Arizona, you'd love to take more time off the clock here. Hard to believe that there's 54 seconds to go, Anthony, in the first half. And Philadelphia, who averaged over 68 points per game, has 13 points on the board. The Soul Sisters, who you're looking at right there, they watch this Philadelphia Soul football team put 89 points on the board. Eight of those touchdowns just from Larry Brackens who's become their great red zone target. It's been about turnovers. It's been about the pacing and the tempo of this game. And right now, not happy. It's about that put him right there. Ron Jaworski, high expectations for his football team this season. They've gotten to a, a Vita Arena Bowl 25. This first half, most certainly not what he expected. And Philadelphia's last trip to an Arena Bowl in New Orleans, they had, they led throughout. They had the big lead in San Jose, came back late. Now, they're going to call this play dead before it starts. Arizona uses a timeout. It'll just be a 30-second timeout. It appeared what they wanted to do is have Davila run but not get into the end zone and, and force either more time off the clock or have Philadelphia have to use a timeout. Philadelphia still has one timeout remaining. Arizona has two timeouts remaining. What's the strategy here? But for Arizona, two timeouts remaining. You're not really concerned at this point about trying to continue, you know, to to kill the clock or anything like that. You want to force Philadelphia to use their remaining timeout. See if you can put a touchdown on the board with as little time remaining in this first half. And for Philadelphia, they may have used a timeout earlier. It was over two minutes on the clock. But you see where this drive has now continued inside of the one-minute warning. In doing that, they're hoping, they were hoping with over two minutes left that they would have had a chance to get the football back and have multiple possessions remaining. First and goal at the one. It appeared that Philadelphia jumped. Before the snap, approach number 90, defense, half the distance to the goal. First down. That's TJ Langley who came over from the Jacksonville Sharks in the trade for Mishai Robinson. When you're on the one yard line and you're a nose guard, you know it's going to be a half the distance penalty. So you say, why not just go ahead and take a shot? Because you're just going to lose, you know, less than a foot from where the football is spotted right now. But if you do time it up perfectly, you've got a shot at a big play. Davila takes the knee. I think this is a very smart decision by Arizona to force Philadelphia to use another timeout as players getting a, a bit upset with one another. So 51 seconds now to go in the first half. And Philadelphia uses their final timeout. I think this is the right strategy from Arizona. Again, Arizona will get the football at the start of the third quarter. We will take a look back to 2000. Right here in the same arena, New Orleans Arena. The Philadelphia Soul taking on the San Jose Sabercats. Matt Durazio and the Philadelphia Soul got out to a big, big lead. And Durazio had his way finding targets like Chris Jackson. And the Soul celebrated. That was back when John Bon Jovi was a part of the ownership group. 
it's been a much different Arena Bowl this time. Arena Bowl 25, at least so far, has not been particularly kind to the Philadelphia Soul. Doug Plank 0 for 4 as a coach in Arena Bowls. Odie Armstrong does not get in, and Arizona can let more time come off the clock. 16 regular season touchdowns for Odie Armstrong. Not only used as a runner, they like to throw him the football out of the backfield. So they're confident continuing to hand him the football in this area of the field. And of course, that continues to allow the clock to run as well. I mean, if this goes according to plan for Arizona, they will score with virtually no time left, and they'll get the ball at the start of the third quarter. So they're managing the clock situation perfectly. And Kevin Guy is certainly a longtime coach in the Arena Football League, 12 seasons, eight years as both a GM and a head coach, and they used the timeout with 14 seconds. It is third down, though, so do you feel that on this play they have to try to get it in? I don't believe they have to because, as you referenced, Arizona's going to get the football back in the third quarter. So I believe Kevin Guy is going to view this as a situation where if we score, that's fine, but it's not going to bother him to go towards down here because they want to make sure there's no opportunity for momentum finishing this first half. But Doug Plank talked to us about the opportunity for momentum and getting the football into the hands of a guy like Derrick Ross, who's made big plays late in halves that have energized his football team on a number of different occasions going into the locker room. Again, coming up at the half, Fran Charles and Kurt Warner back in our Culver City studios, and they will have preseason highlights, including the debut of Tim Tebow with the New York Jets. Getting the take from Kurt Warner, everyone knowing his story, his journey through the Arena Football League and on the NFL grade. This voted the 16th greatest player in AFL history this season. Gathers will not get in. Arizona, though, still has a timeout. They need to use it. And the clock stops with two seconds to go in the half. The Soul Sisters from Philadelphia, they've made the trek down here to the Big Easy. Stacked up right at the point of attack by the defense. Jones is liking it. Soul Sisters loving it. He was playing. You talked about a chance for a momentum swing. It appeared that Arizona had, was doing everything right. Now Arizona is going to be forced to try a field goal. So for Philadelphia, this is a partial stop because Arizona, unless they go for a fake field goal, for Philadelphia, it could have been far worse here at the end of the half. One of the great offensive minds from AFL lore is, is Larry Coherick. And he was always a guy when he got in that situation, he would say, just put the points on the board. He didn't like tinkering around with clock management too much. Chris Gold, the 20 yard kick. And it is good. So the Arizona lead is 27 to 13. And the first half is complete and the Arizona Rattlers in Avice Arena Bowl 25 will go to the locker room leading by two touchdowns and knowing they will have the football at the start of the third quarter. So a great first half, especially got, from the defensive coach, side of the ball. And Sid Bonner, as you can hear, is with Kevin Guy. Sid? Coach, coming in this year, what was your mantra leading in after the, the, the just bad finish last year at the end of the season? Well, our goal was to win the arena ball. That's why the guys came back. And, you know, they've had a great season. We got ourselves in the position here. We got to finish the game. We can't can't think of We got two more quarters, and we got to play for 30 more minutes. With them coming in with a plus 23 turnover margin, do you know it was going to be important for you guys to take a couple possessions away? Well, no doubt. Our defense is ready. You know, I, I think they were, uh, they were feeling pretty good about Virgil not playing, but our Keith Brown's pretty good in the middle. Thanks, Coach. Guys. That's an understatement. Our Keith Brown was the best player on the field in the first half. So Arena Bowl 25, halfway complete. Arizona leads by 14 at halftime. Welcome back to New Orleans at halftime. Arena Bowl 25, Arizona leads Philadelphia 27 to 13. 
And one of the really fun parts of the 25th anniversary season, Hard Wolf alongside Anthony Heron, has been breaking down lists of the greatest players in AFL history. And from the very beginning of the season, we've been going through the list, Anthony. We've showed everybody the top 23 players, but not the top two. It's taken a long time to get to this point, Wolf. 23 names have come through so far. Cleve Van Thomas, who we referenced earlier in the game, one of the finalists for the Hall of Fame. He came in at number 24. Chris Jackson, one of the great wide receivers at number 22. There's Kurt, who you just heard from back at the NFL Network Studios. Kurt Warner was 16. John Corker, the big fella. Then Stevie Thomas was at number 12. Damian Hero, one of my personal favorites, one of the comic book superheroes as a wide receiver. And Clint Dozell, current offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Soul, was at number eight. George LaFrance came in at number six. Quarterback Jay Gruden at number four. And current all-time leader in professional football history with over 1,000. Over 1,100 at this point touchdown passes. Aaron Garcia was player number three. So, of course, we, we've had it come down to this point now. We know it's the same discussion that's been going on for years. Who's it going to be? Is it Eddie Brown? Is it Barry Wagner? Who's going to be number one? So, Wolf, how about you tell us who's number two? Number two is actually my guy. Touchdown, Eddie Brown. He had a great career with the Albany and Indiana Firebirds. An electrifying performer, and he didn't just score touchdowns. When he scored touchdowns, he really got crowds excited. He had that certain charisma. And the 20th anniversary team, he was number one. But number one no more because the new number one is New number one is the greatest player and most certainly the greatest Iron Man in the history of the Arena Football League, Barry Wagner. B Wags, as they call him, was a six time Iron Man of the Year, one at six consecutive seasons, seven appearances in the Arena Bowl in his 16 AFL years, 410 career touchdowns for Barry Wagner so he's a guy who got it done as a wide receiver got it done as a defensive back as a jack linebacker every phase of the game was dominated by Barry Wagner and the silver anniversary committee which you are a member of Ari Wolf has decided that this time in season 25 Barry Wagner is player number one all right let's get a comment on this from said Bonner hey, thanks guys 6'4 218 220 pounds of speed agility this guy was a do-it-all man, and, and he talked about him playing Jack linebacker. When I first started playing against him, he was a covered corner on the outside at 6'4", 218 pounds, very versatile as a football player, understood the game, one of the most intelligent players on the field that you ever meet. Definitely deserving of the honor if you really appreciate true Ironman football. Well, thank you very much, Seth. So now to the Hall of Fame finalists for the 2012 class. We'll take a look at the list of the nominees. Some great, great players, coaches. Cedric Bonner on that list, along with Clint Dalzell, the offense coordinator for the Soul. Greg Hopkins, who played with touchdown Eddie Brown with the Firebirds. Bob McMillan, the current coach of the Chicago Rush. And then two great head coaches, Mike Daly and Mike Hohenzee, who coached together and now let's go down to the field. The commissioner of the Arena Football League, Jerry Kurz, will announce the 2012 Hall of Fame class. Happy to announce our class of 2012, seven inductees. Clint Dolezal, Randy Gatewood, Cleavon Thomas, Mike Daly, and his best friend, best man in each other's wedding, Mike Hoensey, William Daly, William Nero, and Sed Bonner. Wow. Honored, thank you so much, that's incredible. I'm, I'm very honored and humbled by this. This is awesome, and what a great class to get in with. Guys I competed with and, and very humbled right now. Just a tremendous opportunity to honor our players, our coaches, and our contributor, Bill Nero, one of the founding members, but so proud to have you in the, the Hall of Fame with us. I really appreciate this opportunity. I appreciate uh, being a part of this league. It's uh, been embedded in my heart since 1993. I love this league. Well deserved. Guys, that's great stuff and Cedric Bonner certainly deserving of being in the Hall of Fame voted this year the greatest quarterback in AFL history and you know we're good friends with him away from the game and what a great leader and it's great that Sid's in but it's really a marvelous class that's being inducted in 2012. One of the great things about this week has been 
having owners, coaches, players, former players, figures from around the Arena Football League just get to reminisce a bit. You've been around the league for 15 years at this point, and to hear them talk about Seth Bonner, Clint Dozell, Mike Daly and Mike Hohensey, some of the greats in the history of this league that have accomplished things that have allowed the league to survive 25 seasons. Feel really great about this class, inducting seven members after inducting 10 last year. A uh, great class, and I certainly want to send my congratulations to Mike Daly. He was the head coach when I got my first job as a radio play-by-play -play announcer in the Arena Football League in 1998, and I would have never fallen in love with this game, and I'd never be in this seat if it wasn't for Mike Daly. So congratulations to Coach Daly and to all of the seven members of the 2012 Hall of Fame class. But now we got to refocus on the game at hand. Arizona leading Philadelphia 27-13, to and Arizona took advantage of three interceptions thrown by Dan Rodabaugh. Very uncharacteristic first half for the Philadelphia Soul. And here's interception number one. That refocus you're talking about there. When you go into the locker room at halftime, you don't have a lot of momentum coming out as a football team. But the reminder that had to come from Doug Plank, had to come from Clint Dolzell, is that this is the championship game. This is the opportunity that we've waited for throughout the season whether Philadelphia was considered the favorite or not. There is one half remaining in the 2012 Arena Football League season, and the Philadelphia Soul have this last opportunity to try and secure a championship. A lot of football to go. Arizona will get the football at the start of the third quarter. Scott to kick it off for the Soul. Not a deep kick, it'll be Reed from his own end zone. And Reed stopped at the seven yard line. So the Arizona offense back on the field. Now Philadelphia had two half stops. They limited him to field goals on two possessions. All the other possessions, Arizona got touchdowns. This Nick first Davila, possession. Yeah, this is so key for Philadelphia if they could somehow come up with a stop and try to get some momentum in the third quarter. Without a doubt, key for each football team because for Arizona, conversely, an opportunity to really try to seize some control of this football game. Up 14 at this point, potential to go up three scores if they start off with a touchdown on this drive. They set up the screen pass to Armstrong. And Armstrong oh, yeah. brought down at the 12-yard line. Gain of five on the play. Armstrong not a big part of the passing game. He had 10 catches during the regular season, but you know Philadelphia is going to want to bring pressure, and this is a good way to slow down the pass rush. That's precisely what it does. And Kevin Guy told us he feels like Odie Armstrong is the best fullback in the Arena Football League, and he said that not a shot to Derrick Ross, but out of respect and adoration for what he feels like Odie Armstrong brings to his football team. Davila throws. It's caught. It's purify and purify, says see you later. Touchdown, Rattlers. Nick Davila took a shot on this play. Shaking up, as you can see, but he's going to think it's worth it because of what happens after the catch. Had Warren rolling into his legs there. But just completes a short stack right out to Maurice Purify. And this is what he can do. This is the type of weapon that Maurice Purify is. He's not just a deep play guy. He's not just a jump ball threat, even though he's got the size and the physicality. He's a guy who can kill you after the catch. And he certainly killed Philadelphia on that play. Hold on to the extra point, and the kick is up, and it is good. Arizona leads 34 to 13. There is some concern, though, for Arizona as their quarterback got hit on the play, but Purify showing off the strength. Little stiff arm right here, and he takes it for the touchdown. This arena football game is brought to you by Net10. No contract wireless on America's best networks. Nick Davila on this play, he completes the pass, but then he takes a hit. And there's got to be real concern for the Rattlers. They cannot afford to lose their quarterback. And it happened late. And said is down in the uh, Arizona bench area. Said, what do you have for us? 
Hey, Ari uh, just got his left ankle taped up a little bit extra. He said he's fine. Got rolled into a little bit late, but you know in this game it happens all the time. Tough kid. Can't get him out of the game right now. Hey, Sid, once again, congrats on making the Hall of Fame. That's awesome. Thank you very much, my friend. Arizona in control right now, but this is arena football. A three-score lead is rarely enough. Certainly with this much time, we'll see how Philadelphia responds. And Hewley able to collect it. And again, it's going to be kick catch interference. There's a flag at the five-yard line. So that will improve Philadelphia's field position. It actually may even be a flag on Larry Brackens. I'll be curious to see which way it ends up going. Coverage man again from Arizona was down the field extremely fast. And Brackens with it coming off the bar ball. During the return, holding. Number two, the return team. Half the distance. First down. I believe they actually meant to call number one Larry Brackens. As the coverage man came down, he felt like there was an opportunity for the, the Rattlers coverage to get it. So Philadelphia in a deep hole. They've got the football first and ten. They give it to Ross. Ross has some running room. And a late flag comes in. There's a gain of 11 on the play. There's a flag at the six-yard line. They really like to run this crack toss play where you bring wide receivers down from the wing position to help block at the point of attack. But as they dive down in there, you're not allowed to get into the legs, especially of the linebackers, as they're trying to flow with the play. Philadelphia in unfamiliar territory, coming into Arena Bowl 25, having won 10 straight games. Radabaugh gets it to Sammons. Now bring up second and five. But let's again give some perspective. This Philadelphia offense is capable of being extremely explosive, setting an AFL record with 1,228 points, averaging more than 68 points per game. What has Arizona done tonight, Anthony, taking away the effectiveness of the Philadelphia offense? It's been about getting in the throwing windows early. They had some tip passes from the defensive front and from the linebacker position early in the game. And then Dan Rodabout took some shots downfield, and it was one-on-one -on -one coverage where R. Keith Brown came up with the play. Rodabaugh, Sammons was well covered, and Rodabaugh throws in the stands, and it'll be third down for Philadelphia. We saw Rodabaugh take chances in the first half that you didn't normally see him take. And you know, you could maybe blame it on some inaccurate passes because normally, as a quarterback, if you're really going to aim on the deep ball, if you're going to give about a jump ball opportunity, then you want to do it on a shorter pass. As he threw it downfield to Donovan Morgan multiple times, he didn't overthrow the coverage. Gave our Keith Brown a chance to undercut. Third down, Sammons makes the catch and has enough for a Philadelphia first down. Now, there were conversations that took place in the final quarter of the season. The West Division so good and the national conference was so good on a week in a week out basis Arizona faced tougher competition than Philadelphia did it not to say that's the reason why this is happening but Philadelphia did not have to go through as tough a test in order to get to the arena bowl you look at that West Division teams like Utah and San Jose even Spokane who didn't make the playoffs tough out catches made by Donovan Morgan and Morgan's been very quiet tonight talked about this wide receiver core a number of different times and they lost Anthony Tiger Jones to the Philadelphia Eagles late in the regular season but the depth that they had with the guy you're looking at Donovan Morgan with Jeff Hewley Emory Sammons Larry Brackens I mean they shouldn't have missed a beat and they did not miss a beat up until the first just over two quarters of this football game looking like a completely different offense Morgan the 2008 AFL rookie of the year and Rodabaugh they set up the screen to Ross and Derek the Philadelphia Soul Bench loved watching Derrick Rouse getting the football in his hands, and Derrick Rouse knows what to do with it when he gets the football out in space. 
I compared him to Gulliver just last week because all the little Lilliputians just bouncing off the thighs of big Derrick Ross. So Derrick Ross gets the touchdown. Scotcha on for the extra point attempt. Better snap this time. It's got his extra point. No good. Pushes it to the right. And Philadelphia has had problems with kickers all year. They've used four different kickers. So the Arizona lead is 34 to 19. A beautiful night in the Big Easy. Arena Bowl 25. More when we come back. This is the story on the night. Three interceptions from Arizona. A Philadelphia offense with the top scoring team in the AFL, three first half turnovers. Dan Rodabaugh was the fourth rated passer in the Arena Football League, set sole records for touchdowns, for passing yards. He's had an excellent season. For the latest in Arena Football fan news, polls, message boards, and AFL social media, be sure to check out Arena Football Nation, powered by the National Guard at arenafootball.com. National Guard has been a big part of this Arena Bowl week in New Orleans. Is Arena Bowl returning to New Orleans for the first time since 2008? When do you start thinking onside kick? Do you wait till later in the game, or do you maybe go for a surprise one here? I don't like it quite yet. And for Philadelphia, that kick doesn't make sense at all because you give Arizona excellent field position. I assume they were hoping that was going to bounce off one of the front guys and Philadelphia would have had a chance to recover, but it was not well executed. And Arizona hasn't hurt this football team off the kick return game at all yet. Let's go down to the field to Cedric Bonner. Coach, what do you got dialed up? I just got three hitches right here. Right wing zoom, one, one, one. We'll take what they give us right here. Get Go. Guys, I think coming out with the three hitches, Nick Davila, he took the shot in the ankle just a moment ago from the defense. Make sure he's back in rhythm. Reed makes the catch. Very simple play there. And if you're Arizona, you just want to make good decisions now because if you don't turn the football over, this game is built for offense. They should be able to move the ball successfully down the field. And let's go back down to Sid. We're going to short motion here. We're going to run a, a dig with an out route with a post behind it. See if we can hit it. Nice combo, guys. Cedric Bonner likes it. Going to see a deep end. And a receiver deep. Mo Purify taking the top off. Purify's got it, and look at the strength. He's in touchdown, Rattlers. Maurice Purify. 29-yard touchdown catch. Touchdown number four of the night for Purify. Here's a look at why I said Bonner likes the route combo. Because a weapon like Mo Purify, as long as you can set him up one-on-one, -on -one, Kerry Reed had the dig coming across the middle, and so it left Maurice Purify out in the secondary against the Philadelphia coverage. And as great a season as Kent Richardson has had, 14 interceptions, he seems overmatched right now trying to cover Mo Purify. Purify is just a beast. 26 years of age, played college ball at Nebraska. High snap. Goal to extra point is on the way, and it is good. And the Arizona Rattlers, they have not won an Arena Bowl since 1997 when Cedric Bonner was their quarterback. Arizona looking real good, leading 41 to 19. In the bowels of the New Orleans arena, I am joined by Brian Pitzer, the CEO of Avite Caffeinated Water. And I know part of your mission has been to try and educate people about not just Avite, but about caffeinated water, especially as compared to maybe some of the, the carbonated energy drinks and you know being a healthy alternative. You know, it's actually more of uh, all the, the different sugary soft drinks and, and sodas that are out there. I mean, realistically, the world is getting healthier and we want to be healthier. Um, our job and our goal was to give people the best, healthiest alternative to caffeine. I mean, we need caffeine, but we also need water. So why not just make it simple? The time you came in and became a partner and became the presenting partner for the Arena Bowl here was an interesting time for the Arena Football League. But what was 
about the league and about Avite where you felt comfortable? You know what? It was, uh, I think, a time where maybe other larger companies may have been shying away from it. We actually saw it as a real positive, a chance for, for us to come in and, and as a young, energetic brand, hopefully bring that to a, an energetic league. And it's your 25th anniversary. I mean, this is a, such a huge accomplishment for, for the league. Um, you know, we really felt like for us to be a part of that could be a, a real beneficial thing and, and, and bring that, again, that energy and that vibe and get everybody excited and get the players excited and get the league excited. And, and, uh, and, and we just felt it was, it was a good, good combo. And being a part of that young, energetic company, I know the Arena Football League very excited about it. Some of the national partnerships that Avite has going as well. Good stuff there, and certainly uh, our thanks to Avite for helping make Arena Bowl 25 a special experience for the players and the coaches and the fans. Arizona to kick it away. 7.42 to go in the third quarter. It's off the iron. Hewley. Hewley will be brought down at the 13-yard line. So Dan Rodabaugh and the Philadelphia Soul need points, trailing 41-19. And it seems that one of the receivers needs to make a play. Somebody needs to pick things up for Dan Rodabaugh. Clint Dozell is going to give the play call now to Sid Bonner. CD, what do you got down there? Well, we, they got a beat on what they're playing to tackle. We're going to try to get them on a quick post for our standstill guy on Hewley here. Guys? All right, so number three, Jeff Hewley. Let's see who they're going to try to look for here as Morgan goes in motion. And Rodabaugh throws, and Hewley was wide open. And the pass was behind him. But Hewley's been the most successful receiver thus far tonight. Okay. And let's go back down to the field to Seb Bonner. Fans, thank you to Seb is patiently waiting for Clint Dozell to give the play call. Clint? Uh, we're going to try to get first down here with a curl route. We're going to try to get a curl in there for a first down. Guys? Previous I snap was essentially the same play that Hewley scored a touchdown on in the first half where he was wide open. Rodabaugh, that's way over the head of Donovan Morgan. I saw Clint Dozell through his entire AFL career. He's an emotional guy. I can tell by the body language of Clint Dozell that he is just flat out frustrated with what's going on with Dan Rodabaugh. I mean, Clint Dozell is a guy who has real high expectations out of everybody all the time. And his quarterback, maybe it's the big stage, but we have not. Dan Rodabaugh play like this all season. This is not the guy we've seen this year. Not the guy he grew into last season under Clint Dozell when he quarterbacked for him with the Dallas Vigilantes. Third and ten. And a flag comes in. This is, I think, going to go against Arizona. Floyd was matched up with Salmons. You spent a lot of time in coaching, Anthony, and I know you were a lineman, but you know, the psyche of a player is so critical. What can they do to try to help Dan get his confidence back? A moment like he had on the last offensive possession for Philadelphia where Derrick Ross came out and made a huge play, took a short screen pass, went big for a touchdown. You would have thought that would have been the type of play that could have maybe gotten by in this sole offense back into rhythm. It appears so far that that hasn't been the case, but you want to find those short passes, the intermediate routes that he can feel comfortable with. Rodabaugh looking for Morgan, and a flag comes in. It was Brown and Morgan, and that was the key matchup in the first half. As R. Keith Brown had two interceptions in the first half. Donovan Morgan having a little conversation with Mr. Brown. Pass interference, number 11 of the defense. 10-yard penalty in the previous spot. First down. This is a flag that could have gone in either direction. I believe there was a lot of jostling, a lot of hand fighting as Donovan Morgan and Arkeith Brown were running down the boards. I really wasn't certain whether or not with that right arm extended, if they were going to call Donovan Morgan for offensive interference. 
If anything, I maybe could have been comfortable with a no call. I agree with you. I don't think there was enough there for a call. So first and 10 for Philadelphia at the Arizona 17-yard line. Larry Bracken's in the game for Philly. He's in motion. Quick hitter to Morgan. And Brown puts him to the turf at the 10-yard line. And are you willing to continue to do this? Will you just take the short stack routes? Will you just run the swing passes that put Dan Rodabine in position to just complete the easier throws? He hasn't had success throwing the ball downfield. Even the ones that aren't intercepted, he's throwing them out of bounds. He's overthrowing wide receivers. You've got to try and condense this passing game for a bit. I don't think they have any alternative uh, unless suddenly Dan Rodabaugh finds his confidence and gets his rhythm back. Second and short. Brackens is wide open. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Larry Brackens, who in the conference championship game had eight touchdowns, gets his first touchdown in Arena Bowl. 25 in the third quarter. It's now Arizona 41, Philadelphia 25. 63, 78 eligible. 63, 78. Scotia has missed two extra points. This one on the way, and it is good. 41-26. So now strategy again continues. Philadelphia, the last kickoff, it appeared, was going for kind of an onside kick, if you will, by trying to hit a low one to hit one of the Arizona front men. I wonder whether they'll go onside again. Larry Bracken is a tough target to miss. Down in the red zone at six foot four. Another pass off the back foot, Dan Rod about getting it out of his hands. But there's those moments in the AFL where the ball just has to leave your hands. You've got to get it out quick. You've got to get it out on time. You're not always going to have the opportunity to set your feet. And Larry Brackens has won an arena bowl with this organization before. The Soul Sisters have seen him do it. And we've seen Seth Bonner working the sidelines for us. He's down with Dan Rodabaugh. All right, thanks, Dan. Dan, what, what are you seeing out there that, that was giving you a little bit of trouble early on? Well, you know, they're doing a good job bricking over to some receivers. But Jack's doing a good job getting in some throwing lanes. You know, I got to do a good job delivering the ball on time and in the right spot. We should be all right. Did you feel like you got into a rhythm on that last drive? Yeah, you know, our guys uh, did a good job staying on the route. Donovan did a good job fighting through, getting a pass interference call. And then Larry did a good job setting up uh, the fake twist like, right there. So, Thanks, guys. Now, important to keep in mind, it's my contention that unless there's a three-score lead, and hold on a minute, here's an onside kick, and it's recovered by Arizona, and guess who? R. Keith Brown. That guy has been all over the field tonight. But if a team's not up by more than three scores, once you get to a minute, anything is possible. And again, if you watch Arizona's game last week, with a minute to go, they were down nine, and yeah. they ended up scoring the last 15 points of the game. So the beauty of arena football is, because of the way the ball can come off the iron, because of the higher probability of getting all inside kicks than in the outdoor game, Anthony, Philadelphia still has to field down two possessions. They've got a shot. And when you say up to a minute, just to be specific, folks are understanding a minute remaining in the game. There's plenty of football remaining here where Philadelphia can fire back in. Marquis White, touchdown, Arizona. Davila on target, 10 yard touchdown to Marquis White. I talked about the 6 4 frame of Larry Brackens, but a red zone target like Marquis White at 6 foot 7. He doesn't have to be wide open if you're Nick Davila. Just throw the football up into the air. He's got Rayshon Kaiser, one of the best in the business, draped all over him. But those soft hands, those quiet hands from Marquis White laying out. 74 eligible. 74 54. Marquis White won a championship with Spokane in 2010. He's just so big in the red zone. Gold on for the extra point. And the kick is up and it is good. So Nick Davila now is 17 of 23 for 218 yards and six touchdowns. Marky White getting his first touchdown of the night. And when you think about this Arizona franchise and the loss they suffered in Arena Bowl 24, to be able to come back the very next season after that kind of devastating defeat, you, you learn a lot about the guys on your team. And I think that the character of their head coach, Kevin Guy, is reflective in the way this team plays because Kevin Guy is an old school tough guy. It's one thing to repeat as a champion. It's another thing after the previous season losing the championship game 
to come back and be able to make it to the championship again. It's efficiency that Nick Davila plays the football game with. You mentioned his head coach, Kevin Guy. He's normally a defensive guy throughout his career, but now he's turned over to being not only the head coach, but the offensive coordinator of this football team. He's really played a big role in the relationship that he has with his quarterback, Nick Davila. Well, Davila has been terrific tonight. As Arizona was just one play away a year ago, they lost on the final play of the game. Aaron Garcia then with the Jacksonville Sharks through a touchdown pass as the clock expired. But Arizona looking for redemption in Arena Bowl 25. That's a free football. And Arizona recovers. Oni Armstrong at the six yard line. Everything going the Rattlers way tonight. Robbie Gold has been close on a number of occasions. He's had several bar balls throughout the game so far, but Jeff Hewley's done a nice job coming up with him. This one just finally just got away from him. It wasn't even a bar ball, just took one of those awkward hops off the net, off the more taut part of the net. Jeff Hewley couldn't come up with it. Obviously, Arkeith Brown, the MVP of the game. Robbie Gould's been doing his thing so far as well. First and goal at the six. White in motion. Davila gets rid of it. It's purified. Trying to muscle his way in. Is he in? Still waiting for a signal. It's a touchdown. Purify now has five touchdowns in the game. The Maurice Purify caught pass. Short of the goal line, there's three Philadelphia defenders right around him with an opportunity to stop him from getting across the paint, but he would not be denied. So big and so strong. Purify now with seven catches, 117 yards, and five touchdowns. And you can add two dejected soul sisters yeah. to that stat count. And Robinson blocks it. Chance for points for Philadelphia, but then Arizona able to get the football. And Brian Robinson during the season had seven block kicks. So 118 to go in the third quarter. It's 54-26. Understanding that Philadelphia must feel like they're in a state of shock. What can they now do to collect themselves as a group, knowing they've got a little bit more than 16 minutes to work with? They may be going to the idea that you'll just onside kick every time. Because even if you don't come up with it, you condense the field for your defense. And it is more difficult, even as great of a red zone offense as Arizona is. Third in the AFL, nearly 86% down in the red zone. But it does give your defense maybe an opportunity to try to come up with a net ball, to try to come up with a tip pass and get a turnover, more so than trying to trying to get the full field. And so every time Philadelphia comes up with the score, I think that's what you're going to see. Looks like Doug Plank may be starting to employ that. I don't think they have much choice. I mean, they need extra possessions. And Davila and Arizona, they haven't turned it over tonight. They've been very good with the football. I think Philadelphia, the only way they're going to get extra possessions is the onside kick route. Philadelphia came to New Orleans with a lot of confidence. And I think Arizona felt like they weren't getting the respect that they deserve. And I think Arizona's played tonight with a chip on their shoulder. Hewley. Hewley, he can fly. Ball comes out. They're going to say that Hewley was down. The kicker, Chris Gold, comes up with the tackle. I like seeing the kickers getting in the mix. Why not? I mean, Definitely looked like there was an opportunity for six there, maybe just couldn't out Fox Chris Gold in open space. Anthony Heron suddenly likes kickers. I mean, what's the world come to? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first and ten for Philadelphia. Radabon gets it to Hewitt. And then Brown with the tackle. Let's go to set. Kevin, how do you keep your guys focused and locked in to finish this game out the right way? 
Well, they got to do it. <laughs> you know, we got 15 more minutes. If they want it, then we got to stay. We got to keep our poise, keep playing. We got 15 more minutes here. We need, we need one more stop on defense, and we need to just keep putting the ball in the end zone. Guys? Thank you, Sid. Thank you to Coach Guy. Salmon's in motion. Radaba going to the end zone. Can Salmon get there? Yes, he can. Touchdown, Philadelphia. 21 yards, Radaba to Salmon's. Uh, Radaba now with three touchdown passes. It appears Philadelphia will go for two here. Down by 22 points. Do you figure they're just going to start going for two every time at this point because Scotch has had such problems with the extra points? He's only been with the team for a couple of weeks, and so you're going to trust anyone with the hopes of your season on the line here fin finishing up the football game. It appears that they're going to go ahead and trust Dan Rodabaugh and this passing attack. Or it could be Ross, but they throw it, and Brackens gets in for the two-point conversion. So three quarters complete here in New Orleans. But hold on, hold on, there's a flag on the play. The flag is at the one yard line. Very concerned, Doug Plank looking on. And there you see Coach. Certainly not what he expected to happen tonight. This looks like it's going against Philadelphia. You can see how upset Clint Dozell is right now. There's no foul for an offensive pass interference. The block occurred at the line of scrimmage. Therefore, the try is good. Well, Philadelphia wins that argument, but right now they are trailing big on the scoreboard, but it is arena football. A comeback is possible, but Arizona looking for their third world championship in arena football. They lead 54-34 after three quarters. This arena football game is brought to you by Avite, the healthy hydration you want, the caffeine lift you need. Let's go down to the field to Sid Bonner. Coach, 20 point deficit, 15 minutes left. What's it going to take to turn this game around? Well, we got to get some quick turnovers. We're going to try to do it in special teams and on, on defense. But no, we put ourselves in quite a hole here for just 15 minutes. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you, Sid, and thank you to Coach Plank. Expecting Philadelphia to go for an onside kick here on the opening play of the fourth quarter. Avite Arena Bowl 25, Arizona in front by 20 points. And that ball was loose. Philadelphia didn't look for the football. Philadelphia comes out of there with the football, but I believe that the play was dead. And it's going to be Arizona football. I prefer the pop over. I'm always a big fan of that when there's a lot of variations of onside kicks that you can attempt. I like the high hop. It just appeared Philadelphia wasn't aware of where the football was because it looked like there might have been a chance for Philadelphia if they were tracking the football for the recovery. Now, Nick Davila in the second half has been perfect. Six for six, 92 yards and four touchdowns. Another strike and Purify reaches it out. Purify's sixth touchdown of the night. And Davila remains perfect in the second half. And it's not bad coverage. I mean, Kent Richardson led the Arena Football League in interceptions this season for a reason. This is an excellent football player. He was all arena. But Maurice Purify is a weapon like he hasn't faced the entire season. Purify is trying to make a case along with the quarterback <laughs> to be the player of the game. But I still think if things continue the way they're going, R. Keith Brown would still be the net 10 player of the game. When it comes down to it, he was the guy who turned the game in the favor of the Arizona Rattlers. 
And Chris Gold for the first time tonight misses an extra point. So 13 49 to go in the fourth quarter. Arizona leads 60 to 34. We will step away for a moment. That guy right there, red hot tonight, is Arizona playing strong. Welcome back, second half recap, and it's been all about the Rattlers. Nick Davila, the quarterback for Arizona, has not missed a pass. Not a single incompletion in the second half. Philadelphia, they're getting a touchdown. Derek Ross. But it's been a lot more of this. Right on the money, and Maurice Purify, Anthony, has been unstoppable. And as much as Philadelphia still tried to, to fire a shot or two back at the Rattlers, Nick Davila has just been too good. And it's not like he's just throwing the wide open receivers every single time. There's a degree of difficulty to the passes that he's been completing. Larry Brackett's come up with a couple of scores so far in this game. But I mean, there's a defender draped all over Maurice Purify, and Davila continues to deliver it on the money. Davila's numbers 19 of 25, 237 yards, eight touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Hewley. And Hewley across the 10 yard line. Chris Gold has really gotten into a rhythm hitting that bar. I mean, it seems like almost every time he's gotten the bar ball, it hasn't led to a turnover for his coverage team every single time. But I mean, when you see a kicker in a rhythm, it does give you some additional comfort and confidence when you're going down there to cover the kick because you know you have additional time. He's done a terrific job. Want to recap some things that happened at halftime. The top two players of the top 25 players in the 25 year history of the Arena Football League announced number two, Eddie Brown, number one, Barry. Wagner and the 2012 Hall of Fame class announced including our good friend and broadcast partner Cedric Bonner down on the field getting inducted into the 2012 AFL Hall of Fame. Seven people getting inducted into the Hall of Fame all well deserving and I'm sure Cedric will be celebrating post game. He was always good in the fifth quarter and now he's got a special reason to celebrate. <laughs> Ten, Go ahead. Ten people went in the Hall of Fame last year, seven coming in in this class. And the Arena Football League went a decade without inducting a Hall of Fame class, and so there's so many great players. Hugo makes the catch. One of the things, because of that amount of time without a class, and just based on the career length of some of the great quarterbacks, I felt for years that the quarterbacks were underrepresented in the Hall of Fame, and it's not anybody's fault, but now adding Cedric Bonner and Clint Dozell, you're adding two more of the all-time greats. Second down for Philadelphia. Rodabaugh throws, Brackens makes the catch, and he fights and gets in. Touchdown, Philadelphia. So Larry Bracken's coming on in the second half. 13 yards on the score for Philadelphia. And they need to do everything in a hurry the rest of the way. I like the fact that the soul, it started late in the third quarter, coming out with more tempo, trying to go into a hurry up type of philosophy because they need as many possessions as they can come up with to finish this football game if they're gonna continue to have a chance to get back in it. They've converted one two point conversion already. Radabaugh to Sammons. Good blocking. Put the two points on the board for Philadelphia. It's an 18 point game. 11 26 to go in the fourth quarter. If Philadelphia at some point can recover an onside kick, it would put some pressure on Arizona. Nice job on this drive as Brackens gets into the end zone for Philadelphia. Be sure to check out arenafootball.com for all the latest news and information on the Arena Football League. While you're there, be sure to shop the AFL Team Fan Shop for the latest team gear. Check out arenafootball.com today. Let's check out some of the award winners. Some of these were announced at the awards dinner last night. National Guard MVP Tommy Grady, who set all kinds of records. He was also the Russell Offensive Player of the Year. Tommy Grady, just sensational. 
And then Joe Sykes from San Jose, the defensive player of the year. Jared Perry from Chicago, the net 10 rookie of the year. And the Ironman of the year, Jeff Hubie, in tonight's game representing Philadelphia. Here comes an onside kick. A slow dribbler. And it appears Arizona has it. And one of the Hall of Fame inductees is with our own Cedric Bonner. Coach O, first off, let me congratulate you on getting into the Hall of Fame. Tell me what went through your mind when you heard the words finally. Well, congratulations to you as well. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's just you know, a long time coming because it gives me a chance to talk to favorably about a lot of people that I kind of rolled their shoulders to get to this point. You know, a lot of good men and women, coaches, players, uh, front office people, uh, equipment guys, trainers that, you know, all, along the way have just been dynamic and just made this a thrill to be part of. And, um, you know, just like yourself, I, I think you understand how hard it is to be successful in arena football uh, all these years, especially every year wondering if arena football is going to be there or not. Well, 1987, you're a player in the league. I mean, you're a lifer. You've been in 25 years. One of the only original guys to be there for that long. What is it about this game that just drew you in and consumed you? I think, I think it's the fans. I think this is one of the best spectator sports going where actually a fan can come to the game and possibly make eye contact with a player and maybe even get a response back from that guy. You ain't going to get that in the NFL, the NBA. That don't happen. Where a majority of these people that do get in the building, if they want to wait by the wall, they can get that kind of interaction. Thanks, Coach, for taking the time, and congratulations again. You too, my friend. That's Guys, pretty, pretty sweet. Two Hall of Famers there together. And Reed is upended at the five-yard line. Coach Mike Hohenzee, most notable for his time as the head coach of the Chicago Rush, won Arena Bowl 20. A football team that really wasn't in position to make the postseason had a late surge. Yeah, and they were seven on. and nine that year and went on to win. But I think that you would agree that you know he would count his years as the head coach of the Albany Firebirds, who's a real big part of his coaching career as well. Is that coaching tree between Mike Hohenzee and Mike Daly? Very similar to the Bill Walsh coaching tree in the National Football League, where it just spawned a lot of coaches who went on to be successful with different franchises. Davila to Armstrong, and Armstrong appears has the first down. So nine and a half minutes to go in Arena Bowl 25. Arizona Rattlers have not won an Arena Bowl since 1997. This is their seventh appearance in an Arena Bowl. They have two championships looking for number three tonight. The head coach on the opposite sideline, Doug Plank of Philadelphia. He was on the staff with the Arizona Rattlers through several of those Arena Bowl losses. Also as the head man with the Georgia Force, lost an Arena Bowl. The give is to Armstrong, untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, Rattlers. 66 to 42. Love the design of the play. So they brought the jumbo package into the game. They're motioning big people to the field side. So the defense has to react to all the mass over to the wide side of the field. Now Odie Armstrong just takes the toss play into the paint. Well, as talked about many times, Odie Armstrong, a very complete fullback. Derek Ross is a dynamic offensive threat, but I think people could make the case that Armstrong the more complete fullback because of his ability to block. Gold on for the extra point, and that's no good. And it's no Great blocking up front made it easy for Armstrong. The big guys seal it. Armstrong gets the touchdown, and Kevin Guy's pumped up. This arena football game is brought to you by Sheridan New Orleans. Sheridan New Orleans, the official home of Avite Arena Bowl 25. The good people over at Sheridan New Orleans have taken great care of everybody this week. There's the dream team. They've enjoyed their stay at Sheridan. As Philadelphia. As we. Yeah, we certainly have. You've gotten to spend a few more days here than I have. I'm a little jealous. Always a great time to come to New Orleans. Great venue for so many big time sporting events. Next year's Super Bowl will be right here in New Orleans. It's a city that's still going to be awake by the time we, we get out of here after this late kickoff. 
Jeff Hewley to return it for Philadelphia. Marquis White, the wide receiver, a nice tackle on special teams. So Philadelphia down by 24 points, 7.57 to go in the fourth quarter. I've seen stranger things happen, but the reason I'm reluctant to think that Philadelphia can make the comeback is because of how well Arizona has played tonight. And even if they continue to score points on offense, it's about finding a way defensively to shut this Arizona offense down. Radabaugh going deep, and Morgan's double covered. It was almost another interception as Philadelphia has had no success tonight on the deep ball to Donovan Morgan. Now, said, I realize there's still time to go, but you can give a unique perspective on the Arizona Rattler organization. You played basically your entire career for Arizona, and they had such a great franchise while you were quarterback. Talk about the Rattlers, their organization, and what they've meant to the Arena Football League. I, I tell you what, first class from day one, 1992, the Snake Pit sold out 15,500 fans, and those fans have stayed true to the game and been great supporters of the Arena League ever since. Uh, it, it's just going to mean so much to finally break the snide to get that championship and take it back to the desert. What has been the characteristics of the Rattlers that has made that franchise one of the marquee franchises in the AFL all these years? I think for the time that we weren't successful, or they weren't successful, excuse me, I still talk like I'm part, <laughs> but uh, the time they weren't successful, the ownership was shaky. Uh, we had the Colangelos in for, for so many years. And now ownership is stable and, and they're doing all the right things. And that's what it takes in this league to put a successful franchise together. And Kevin Guy, I mean, can you talk about a better recruiter than that guy? He goes out and finds tremendous talent and it's not hard to sell Arizona. You know what I mean? Well, I know you had a great time during your career down there. Heard plenty of stories about Sid hanging out with Charles Barkley in the whoa, Phoenix whoa. area. Back when he was single, said, you know, said's a family man now. Huey makes the catch and out of bounds. Said, when you look at the Arena Football League and where it is today, and you think about all the great teams and, and the great players that you competed against, when, you, when you're down there at the field level, do you still have that itch? Do you, do you still wish that you could still compete and play this great game? I haven't stopped sweating since kickoff. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm sweating. My palms are sweaty. I'm shaking people's hands. And they, why are you nervous? I'm, I mean, I feel like I'm ready to go in right now. So body temperature's been up the entire game. Now, Larry Brackens has been the offensive star for Philadelphia in the second half. And you can see Clint Dozell telling his football team, tempo, tempo, we got to go, we got to go. The coaching staff from Philadelphia has yet to give up on this football game. It's quarterback Dan Rodabout. Coach, I like the call. Getting here to the line of scrimmage, preparing to go for two, seeing if they can make this yet again a two-score game. Rodabout with time and too much on that throw. More was open in the corner of the end zone, and Clint Dozell literally couldn't even look at his quarterback. He was so mad. Again, for a guy like Clint Dozell, I mean, he was a quarterback for so long, he controlled the situation. You went into coaching after being a player. Talk about how hard it is when your players don't execute what you think is a good play. It's the most frustrating thing about being a coach because you still have that sense, that physicality of feeling like you can go through those motions. And it's been interesting to watch Clint Dozell over the last couple of years working with Dan Rodabaugh. And as he stands behind him in the pocket, you can see Clint wanting to almost throw the football for him. Oh, I, I think that's a fact. Now, the star offensively for Arizona has been Maurice Purifon, and he has been pure tonight. Six touchdowns. And they've been of a variety of ways. The deep ball, the short pass that he's been able to take to the house. Nick Dabble has had to move the pocket a bit and throw the strike to Mo Purify. And as what I believe the most versatile wide receiver in the league, you have to have a nose for the goal line. Or even when he's catching it in a position where he's not quite across the paint, he's willing to fight. Well, Kevin Guy, when we, we talked to him, he said he loves the big physical receivers because in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and even sometimes we saw Purify go through three would-be tacklers, he's just so much bigger than the DBs for Philadelphia. 
And that onside kick is going to be Arizona football. Ball loose for a moment, but into the wall. Wendell Pierce is downstairs to his set bottom. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Wendell Pierce, obviously actor from the show Treme on HBO, all these phenomenal shows. Tell me your thoughts about this game of arena football. It is fast paced. It is exciting. I had a couple of kids up here, man, and they've just been having a ball. I mean, it's, it's the first time in the game. And you couldn't get a, a, a better game. Two great teams. It's fast paced and great football. Talk to me about your endeavors earlier in the week with uh, helping feeding kids in, in the city. You see, that's one of the great things about the arena football. They have uh, in their DNA to be a community active uh, league. And they came out to my store, Sterling Farms, and gave out 500 bags of groceries to this community, which is underserved, the food desert. And uh, the, everyone was excited. We have people from the neighborhood here, and we're just so thankful to uh, the Arena Football League uh, for coming out to Sterling Farms, our new uh, grocery store. Thanks, Wendell. Guys? And I, I got to be out there when Wendell Pierce teamed up with the Arena Football League to bring some groceries, some fresh food, fresh produce to some of the, the underserved communities around the New Orleans area. He's a New Orleans guy. He's been in The Wire in the past. Of course, a very popular show currently in Treme, which is shot right here in the city of New Orleans. A lot of folks remember from the movie Waiting to Exhale. Maurice Purified won't go down, and he's in for his seventh touchdown of the game. He's making a pretty strong case to be yeah, the net 10 player of the game. I'm willing to say he's certainly in the hunt now at this point. 13 Even though the yards. Game turned in the first half off R. Keith Brown and the interceptions he made, but Mo Purify, he's put the stranglehold on it. Well, there's plenty of awards to go around. I mean, you have, you have a defensive player of the game, you can have your offensive player of the game, you can have your net 10 player of the game. We're going to have the Avite play of the game. There there's a lot go. of opportunities to hand out some hardware. Gold's extra point, no good. 72 to 48, just 248 to go in the fourth quarter. Arizona Rattlers came into this game. I think the perception was that Philadelphia's offense was so potent. The, the question was, would Arizona's offense be able to keep up with the Philadelphia offense? But this game was decided early because Dan Rodabaugh threw three first-half interceptions. One of them not so much his fault the first when the ball got tipped in the air. But the underthrown ball deep down the field to Donovan Morgan that R. Keith Brown. Then Arizona, you could start to play relaxed because you're up by a couple scores, and it takes some of the pressure. And you could see Philadelphia, I and mean, they've looked that frustrated most of the night. 115 touchdowns, only 18 interceptions in the regular season for Dan Rodabaugh. I mean, that's the main reason that he was the number four pass efficiency quarterback in the Arena Football League. But this has just not been the guy that we've seen throughout the regular season. And I remember watching he and Clint Bilzer work together last season when they were together in Dallas. And there would be times where Clint would get frustrated with Dan as a quarterback, some of the decisions, maybe some of the inconsistency with his accuracy. And we've seen play caller and quarterback kind of go back to that a little bit tonight, that old frustration creeping back in. Jeff Hewley. And Arizona's done a good job in their kick coverage. You talked earlier about the job of their kicker, Chris Gold, how he's done a nice job. But the other guys in the return team have done a very nice job as well. Jeff Hewley can be an electrifying guy in the kick return game multiple returns for touchdowns this season. The Iron Man of the year in the Arena Football League, no doubt about it. He's a guy who you have to watch every time he takes it off the net. Arizona has scored on all 12 possessions tonight, and this is a Philadelphia team that created 64 takeaways, and they have yet to create a takeaway in Arena Bowl 25. That's where the story is told for this football game, Art. First and 10. Rodabaugh gets it to Hewley. And Arkeith Brown will get credit for another tackle. Ten yards on the play. And I will say this about the battle up front because we came on the air talking about it a bit. Both head coaches told us that they felt like the game would be decided by the offensive and defensive line play. Overall, there's been some parries and thrusts. Both offensive lines overall have done a nice job protecting the quarterbacks. Each defensive front is taking their shots here and there, getting some heat on the quarterbacks. 
but it's really been the skill position players. I'll admit it, as an old lineman, I don't like to say it, but it's really been the execution on one side and the lack of execution on the other side at the skill position level that's really played into the turnovers that we've seen. And for Philadelphia, their leading receiver through most of the season, one of the top receivers in the AFL, Tiger Jones, got signed by the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think Philadelphia thought they had plenty of depth and really good receivers. But you wonder, had Tiger Jones been here, in terms of the deep threat, he's a different kind of receiver than Dante Morgan. Without a doubt. I mean, you can't lose a guy like Tiger Jones, the first receiver in the Reading Football League history, to have back-to-back 2,000-yard -back seasons and think it won't affect you at all. But so much talent in Philadelphia. I believe there's enough talent where they could have come out and performed better, but they have not executed. Just one minute to go in Arena Bowl 25. The Arizona Rattlers just 60 seconds away from starting a big party in the Big Easy for Rattler fans. Time for the Avite play of the game, and it came early. Our Keith Brown stepping in front, makes the interception. Our Keith Brown outstanding all night long. The rookie stepping up big time for the Rattlers. And now it's time for the Net 10 player of the game, and we go to Cedric Bonner. And obviously, no surprise, eight touchdowns on the night, just playing like a man child. Maurice Purify doing the Huskers proud, coming out here tonight. Net 10 player of the game, Mo P. Thank you, I appreciate it. Any other words for us? Uh, you know, I came here to the arena, I mean, uh, Arizona, to put them over the edge and win a championship. And that's what we did, and we got a ring now. Congratulations, guys. Mo Purify was mainly the big off-season acquisition that Kevin Guy had. He spent a lot of time recruiting some of his own players back. Has about half the roster back from the team that experienced that crushing defeat in Arena Bowl 24. And he lost Rod Windsor, one of the best receivers in the league last year, no longer with the Arizona Rattlers. But getting Maurice Purify, he was able to replace that and in some ways even exceed what he got out of Rod Windsor in the lineup. One-minute timing rules in effect here at the one-minute warning. The back of the end zone was open. They are going to now close it. And Clint Dawzell, it has been a frustrating night for the offensive coordinator for Philadelphia. Philadelphia came in as the highest scoring team in the history of the Arena Football League. 1,228 points and averaged out to 68.2 points per game. And with 60 seconds to go, they only have 48 points. number four now Arizona's three interceptions turned into 17 points we'd be remiss if we didn't mention defensive coordinator Omar Smith again for the way he's been able to put this together because the relationship between the Jack linebacker and the coverage that takes place in the secondary when you've got a guy like Kevin McCullough who knows how to make plays who's used to getting his hands on the football he can be in a position to undercut the routes when you know the coverage is going to roll and dictate that he can take that chance. Morgan makes the catch. Philadelphia uses a timeout. Philadelphia now has two timeouts remaining. Clock stopped here with 50 seconds to go. I mean, Clint Dawzell has had that look of disgust on his face basically all night. Now the James F. Foster Trophy. Just a few moments away, Arizona Rattlers will be celebrating with that big trophy, and it is a big hunk of hardware. And I'll be interested to see how quickly they can get the podium set up. And if they even get it set up, I was here earlier in the week when they were working on that, and they had the stock clocks out, and they were trying to time it how quickly. Could it be two and a half minutes? Could it be three minutes? And then that big hunk of hardware. That's going to get presented to someone. I remember in 2008 when Philadelphia won, there was this running joke that they were going to have to get an extra seat on the Southwest flight home <laughs> just for the trophy. <laughs> and there's a flag down on the play. <laughs> the fan makes the catch. He gets to keep the football.
Jack linebacker number 20 out of the box at the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. A referee tonight, Joe Pester, telling us that Kevin McCullough was out of the box. Even once you're inside the five, inside the rev zone, fueled by Rev Honey, still have to be within that five yard window. So it'll be first and goal at the three. So quickly, Sammons could only get his right hand on it and couldn't bring it in. Only two seconds come off the clock. What will you take away from the silver anniversary season, Anthony? I think the fact that the fans continue to support the football league for all this time. I mean, you, you were in the league before I was, and to think about the fact that the Arena Football League has made it to and now through season 25 and hoping for another 25 at this point. Larry Bracken's another touchdown, but there is a flag down. Larry Bracken's has had a monster second half. Three touchdowns. If that one counts, it'll be four. Pass interference, number 19 of the defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. So four touchdowns for Larry Brackens, all coming in the second half. Me. Any hope that Philadelphia had of getting back into this football game, Larry Brackens was the guy who came up with the plays they needed to try and stay in the contest. A question that's going to be asked is, why wasn't Larry a bigger part of the offense in the first half? because it seemed that Donovan Morgan was more the featured receiver and Morgan was not able to beat Marquise Brown. Marquise Floyd, a nice tackle for Arizona. And the great thing for Arizona is everybody contributed. They beat Philadelphia on the offensive side, the defensive side, and on special teams. Without a doubt, a complete team victory. Maurice Purify deservingly so, the net 10 player of the game. We talked about how great Nick Davila has been throughout this football game. But the whole team put this together for Arizona. We talked about Kevin Guy as a recruiter, the talent that he's brought in. But I don't think we can state enough the difficulty of a football team who loses a championship game and not just loses, but in crushing fashion on the very last play of the ball game. After having your own emotional touch, I mean, Nick Davila led what he felt like was going to be the game winning touchdown drive just seconds before Aaron Garcia ripped the hearts from Arizona Rattlers Nation. And they were able to come back in the 2012 season, the silver anniversary season of the Arena Football League, get back to the Arena Bowl and put this kind of performance out there. And the other thing is they went through a lot more adversity this year than they did a year ago. They were a little bit more like Philadelphia. They were kind of cruised into the Arena Bowl last year. But this year they dealt with a lot of injuries. They had to change some personnel during the season. I think Kevin Guy thinks that that's a part of why this team developed the toughness and the closeness that it takes to win a championship. And you see the message that Kevin Guy was delivering to his football team before the game. I mean, the access we get in the Arena Football League where you get the camera right there in the locker room and you hear a coach like Kevin Guy talking to his team about breaking the will of their opponents. He really felt like he had a football team who was mentally and physically tough enough to come out here and break the will of a football team who had been the favorite throughout the regular season, the most talented team in the league by most estimations, the best record in the league, the highest scoring offense in the history of the league, and he felt like his team could come out here and put this performance on. Uh, Arizona will deserve all the accolades they will receive. Just a magnificent performance in all phases of the game, and they have great fans in Arizona. I'm sure that there's going to be a great celebration when they get back to the Phoenix area. And Arizona is going to win their first championship since 1997. As much as our Cedric Bonner is now a member of the media, no longer plays for the Arizona Rattlers. Big smile on the face of said down on the field. He loves this organization. Marquis White does the smart thing there and just knocks that ball into the stands. It'll be Arizona football. Now keep in mind in the final minute, the team ahead cannot take a knee. So it's not as though we're going to have one play and be done. If they run the ball and get forward progress, it'll be up to Philadelphia to decide if they want to use one of their two timeouts. 
but it's just a matter of time. Arizona is going to be crowned champions of Avite Arena Bowl 25. I think it's important on behalf of the Arena Football League thanking the city of New Orleans for the third time inviting the league back here for its championship game. And then Nick Davila gets forward progress and it, see if Philadelphia uses a timeout. And Philadelphia does use a timeout. For Doug Plank, the head coach for Philadelphia, three times he was with Arizona, made it to the Arena Bowl, unable to come up with a victory. Then one time, got to the Arena Bowl as the head coach of Georgia, coming into this game 0 for 4 in Arena Bowls, and it's now going to be 0 for 5. But I still think Doug Plank should be awfully proud of what the Philadelphia Soul accomplished in, in winning the American Conference, representing their conference, and getting to the Arena Bowl. But I'm sure this one is going to sting for quite a while. And Davila picks up forward progress. And Philadelphia uses their last timeout. So there should be just one more play, and then the Rattlers can start celebrating. 33 seconds to go in the game. And Anthony, I know yourself and the commissioner, Jerry Kurz, and all the people in the league office in Chicago, just I'll be speaking for a lot of people. We all appreciate the hard work you guys put in week in and week out so that people at the NFL Network can come and present arena football to the rest of the country. But we know a lot of the hard work gets done in the league office during the week. And so you and your entire staff and the commissioner's staff, thank you for all that you do. I know that all the fans in the Arena Football League really appreciate what you guys do. And, and so do all of us that are lucky enough to work in the Arena Football League. We had a great time last night, like you mentioned earlier, hosting the awards banquet, seeing some of the fans, some of the people from AFL Field Pass, the fan club that came in town, traveled from all around the country to get here to the city of New Orleans and continue to support the Arena Football League. And so that was a great time, and it's been a great time here in the city of New Orleans, and most certainly now with the final timeout being gone for the Philadelphia Soul, the Arizona Rattlers about to have a great time as well. The Arizona Rattlers, Arena Bowl champions, 72-54 to 54 over the Philadelphia Soul. So congratulations to the Arizona Rattlers. The redemption season. They lost on the final play of Arena Bowl 24. But Kevin Guy and the staff and the players stuck together. They believe they can come back and win Arena Bowl 25. And they get it done in convincing fashion. And the Arizona Rattlers back on top of the Arena Football League. Their first championship since 1997. And for Philadelphia, they're now one and one in Arena Bowls. They could not repeat what they did here in New Orleans in 2008. The better team won tonight, and Cedric Bonner is with the game-winning quarterback. Nick, just an efficient all-around performance. You know, what were your thoughts coming into the season after the disappointment last year? What were your goals, and, and how did you plan on getting them? Well, you know, uh, like LeBron James said, it's about time for Arizona Rattlers. You set the bar early in your career. And now we're bringing it back. And uh, going back to last year, uh, you know, two seconds away, but you got to keep playing. And uh, every season's going to be different, and we just fought through it every year. Coming in, you guys weren't, weren't getting a lot of credit. Underdogs coming in. Philly was the favorite, the top team all year in everybody's mind. Talk to them about the National Conference and the difficulty playing in that week in and week out. Oh, uh, you know, the National Conference is the best conference in the in the whole arena league. Uh, San Jose, Spokane, and Utah, they're, they got great teams. And, uh, you know, when you go through the fire like that, you come out stronger. And uh, just, I can't be so any more happier than for this organization, for my teammates, all the injuries we went through, we kept battling and we kept fighting. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Thank you very much, Cedric. Congratulations to the Arizona Rattlers. How about the numbers? Nine touchdown passes. And Nick is going to celebrate with his teammates. Avite Arena Bowl 25 champions, the Arizona Rattlers. Jerry Kurz is going to be down on the field to handle the presentation of the James F. Foster Trophy. So 25 years, the Arena Football League has been in business. And Arizona will now have its third championship. And certainly this is a bit of a surprise, the final score with Arizona 
really taking charge early in the first half, creating turnovers. Three first half interceptions by the Arizona defense really kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. What a story for this football team throughout this season, not just the disappointment from last year, but the performance of this season that's led them to this point. All right, let's send it down to the field and the commissioner of the Arena Football League, Gary Kurz. Jerry with the mic in hand. Commissioner still looks like he's directing traffic. I think he's looking for somebody from the Arizona ownership group. How about that for EK, Arena Bowl 25. First of all, congratulations to a tremendous Philadelphia Soul team and season. Big round of applause. It gives me great honor on behalf of the Arena Football League, its owners, its players, its coaches, staff, to award with Jim Foster, the inventor of this game, the trophy named after him, the James F. Foster Trophy, to Ron Schertz, Joe Winham, and the MVP of this game, Nick Davila, and Kevin Guy, the trophy. Congratulations. No play, no play. Great moment for the Rattlers as they are back on top. All Jerry, what can we say? Huh? Tough arena oh, balls. Yeah. Thank you, fans. Him. Thank you, New Orleans. Ron and his group did a great job. You know what? We great for the brand. And um, Doug, coach, what a great year. And uh, Jerry, thank you very much. This is fun. What a wonderful job you did taking over this group, along with Joe, Kevin Guy. Thanks. Hey, uh, first I want to congratulate Philadelphia. What a great season they had. What a great, we, we appreciate all the fans that came out tonight. Arizona. That's it for us here in New Orleans. Avite Arena Bowl 25 is done. Our final score, Arizona defeats Philadelphia at 72 to 54. Big congratulations to the Arizona Rattlers. Coming up next on NFL Network is Total Access. On behalf of our great crew, so many great people worked so hard all season long, 23 weeks on NFL Network. Certainly our thanks to Cedric Bonner, my partner, Anthony Heron. I am Ari Wolf saying so long. Good night to everybody, and thanks for watching.